Hello, friendos. Let's dial this in. It's so good to be back. How is everyone doing? How was the week? Welcome back to the kitchen. I don't know if anyone got to catch us last weekend on our mountain adventures, but it was honestly like much needed guys. And I don't know how everyone else's week went, but this was a week. It was a week. So I'm very happy that it's the weekend time. Hi Dust. Hi DJ Ashlita. Hi Clem. Kimmers. Yeah. Happy Friday. I was late today, Kate. It's okay, Kimmers. I'm just happy you're here now. Hi, Cookie. Hi, Cassius Carl. How are we all doing? We got McKay AJ in here with us too. Palooser, Blood Oak. So good to see everyone. It was so beautiful out there, isn't it? And thanks, Clem. Yeah, picked up this shirt. Uh, what? A couple weeks ago. Kids section. It may or may not be a little boy's shirt extra large. Fits a Kate, so there we go. I was like, I need this. I love skulls and I love pizza. So it, it's it's what it is. <laughs> it's been a week, Blood Oak. Been on it all week, so finally a break. Honestly, like we literally worked this week with half of the staff, six out of 12 people, but like still doing the same amount of stuff. So yeah, it was a week, guys. It was very stressful. And yeah, we couldn't stream yesterday because, well, the Tesla decides to update over the phone. And if you're not at home on Wi-Fi, it'll take all of your data. So we lost 45 gigs of data in one day because the car decided to update. <laughs> Was like, oh no. So yeah, there's that. But I think it's restarting again like next week. So we'll be good to go for future grocery shop streams. And yeah, Kimmers, it fits me and that's all that matters. That's what I thought. It was like one of those like walking by because like I don't really shop in the stores. We were just looking for new shoes for Sam. Walk by and I was like, wait a sec. I need this. <laughs> Caffeinated couple, how are you? And yeah, it is going to be absolutely beautiful outside today. It's a bit like cloudy still. I think the clouds still have to burn off through the sun. But yeah, plus 20 C. So I was like, you know what? We are going to be doing some grilling outside today. We need that in our life. Get a little vitamin D, some fresh air. So that'll be really fun. I'm excited. We got, what is this pack? I think it's like three, either three or four flank steaks. This is a pack from the business Costco for $98. And it's nice to see that they are grading the beef again. So triple A beef flank steak is honestly so good for grilling in the summer because it doesn't take long to grill. And like you can put it with a bunch of different things, salad, sandwich. Today we're just gonna like slice it and put it on the plate with roasted potatoes and stuff. So we'll marinate those up first thing. I think we'll cook two. And then Chrissy Dubs from work, he's gonna take one. So we'll vac seal that for him to take. And then we'll have like one extra. Maybe make a steak sandwich or something coming up. Why did I not have any audio from that? Alert, but White Dove, thank you so much for the tier one resub 26 months. How have you been? And Mish is rolling in too, what? All of the over 20 months subs here. Mish, happy 21. You had Thai green curry for dinner. That's funny you say that because I've been kind of craving it. I was like, I have all this coconut milk. I think I need some Thai food in my life. Maybe we'll make that next week. Good morning, White Dove. Yeah, the audio says not today, Weasel. I don't even know. <laughs> like the system sounds are up all the way. We don't know. And Cookie, thanks guys, already <laughs> a level two hype train. Let's get it. We'll go backwards since I don't know how to set this up right. Choo, 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 choo. For all of you. It's great to be here with you guys too. Yeah, always look forward to streams, especially if we have a crazy work week. Wild, wild. So Sam was at work today. He'll be back like momentarily later on. Maybe in two hours from now? We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so we got a couple of really awesome recipes linked to share for everyone today. If you wanna cook something like this 
for yourself at home at a later time. Or I guess if you have all the ingredients, you can cook along too. Thank you, Dusty, for the 300. I appreciate you. So menu going down today. Grilled, marinated beef flank steak, smashed garlic baby potatoes, because you know we have a small amount of garlic to use. <laughs> and then we'll make a béarnaise sauce together. So that's a variation of the mother sauce hollandaise. Basically just has tarragon in it, a little bit of white wine vinegar, stuff like that. It is so good with steak and potatoes. So that's what I usually put as a sauce with this kind of stuff. And just some broccoli. It's like kind of the only veg I could scrounge up extra in the fridge today. Whether we, we could do this. We could either roast it with the potatoes in the oven or after the steaks come off of the grill over the charcoal, because they have to rest for about 10 minutes before we slice them. We could grill broccoli. Grilled broccoli is so delicious. I think we might do that. And we might make it like a little like chili. Sweet chili on there is really good on the grill. So yeah, that's today, pretty simple. And then this weekend's gonna be nice and busy. We have a lot of supper club orders, both for our supper club folks and for some of Sam's friends that are interested in having some barbecue ribs. Is this sauce for the steak? It kind of goes with everything dust. Like I know Mish has had steak and potatoes with béarnaise. Same with cookie before. I know you mentioned it pretty sure. And yeah, I like to like dip the steak in the sauce, dip the potatoes, even the broccoli will be really good dipped in. So it just kind of brings the whole dish together. And thank you, FCB. I hope you've been well. Thank you for the thousand ditties. 98%. What? What? Insane. And nice. Nice, Clem. Yeah, you're going to ask what the béarnaise sauce was. So hollandaise just with some tarragon and a couple other ingredients in there. And that's so cool, Mish. Béarnaise is something you'll find at every restaurant there. That's really cool because that is definitely not the case here. Like maybe a fancy like French fine dining restaurant, but that is like it. Otherwise, what? We just make it ourselves at home, right? <laughs> So yeah, going down tomorrow, we got some barbecue. So we will be starting two hours earlier than usual. I'll start on my side at 10 a.m. to get the ribbies on since they take like six hours to smoke. We'll spice them up together, get them prepped that way. And then Sunday, we are cooking for Greek Greco Greek, his pots and pans menu redemption. We're gonna be doing some Moroccan style braised lamb leg. I'm so excited. So yeah, very tasty weekend coming up. Lots of different meats and stuff. Yeah, it's like when it gets nice out in the spring, time to time to get outside, start smoking, grilling, all of this stuff. So I'll get my list out and we'll make a little prep list so that we stay organized today. Also, cheers. Been working on a little rando latte here. It's so delish. And heat ender, hi, hi. Does that work with goat too? I have not cooked a lot with goat before, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. I don't see why that would be bad at all. I think it's definitely inter interchangeable and you could even do like a Moroccan style beef too, if you don't like lamb or goat. Hello, Ralph, how are you doing? Okay, so first things first, I think we should marinate the steaks so that they have lots of time to get flavored up. The recipe I linked just reading through a little bit earlier this morning, they said minimum 30 minutes to marinate the steak, but up to overnight is always recommended. We'll probably get a couple hours worth of marinade before we start cooking. Hi, Game Brain. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the 100 bitlies, friend. Hope you've been good. Okay, so marinate steaks and then we will also like vacuum seal the extra ones back seal extras after that we can prep the potatoes for smashing actually so smashed potatoes are a little bit different than roasted potatoes 
is we are going to boil the baby potatoes whole first until they're like nice and soft and able to be pressed down and then we'll press them all down on a sheet pan and then those get roasted up after. Weasel, salt and pep is all you need. That is honestly really all you need, especially if you're like putting your steak on a grill, for sure. You get such good flavor that way. But I do like a little extra flavor, like marinating a flank steak, I just find turns out just that bit better. Yeah, pump it up, meat and potatoes. <laughs> Hello, Moisty. You're doing okay, Ralph? Just relaxing, cook Japanese style beef curry, yummo. Yum, with like the, is it apple or pear in there? So good. Okay, you said apple. I should have just kept reading. And honey flavor last week on Sunday. I hope it was yummy. And hi, Kanara. I didn't even know you were going to California. So hope you had the best time ever. And yeah, welcome back. It's great to have you. Smashed potatoes are the bomb. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've been craving. I was like, what? what kind of potatoes do we need with our meat today? We're smashing them. We'll put lots of herbies on there. More garlic. Why not? Isn't flake steak a tad tough so the marinating helps it tenderize? That too, I find blood oak. Good point. I didn't mention that yet, but good one. Because it's true. It is definitely a cut of beef that gets worked quite a lot on the animal. So yeah, doing a little bit of vinegar typically in the marinade will just help to tenderize it that little bit more. And like I said, overnight is always recommended, but if you can even just do a couple hours, it's gonna be good. You always over season weasel thinking it's not enough. So you just go with salt and pepper for safety reasons. That's a good idea though. And thanks friendos, level two hype train already today. We got all the emotes. Thank you to everyone who contributed. Two subs and 2,700 bits, what? <laughs> Oh man, you guys spoiled, spoiled me. You did loaded smashed potatoes recently with sour cream, bacon and cheese. Game brain, that actually sounds legendary. What? Thank you for putting that in my brain. Maybe we'll make that one day. I'm in. Thank you Ralph for the six as well. Okay, so marinate the steaks, vacuum seal the couple extras that we'll have, boil potato. Obviously we'll season the boiling water at that point. We'll say smash. And I'll just say like dress, is we'll chop up some herbs, some garlic. We'll dress the potatoes to finish roasting them in the oven for sure. Olive oil, salt and pepper there. And then the recipe that I linked for the smashed potatoes today, she said that she bakes them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for like 40 minutes. That does seem like a pretty long time. So definitely leave yourself that amount of time. But I always find that it takes only about like half an hour at that temp until they're crispy on the outside and like really fluffy in the middle. Yeah, game brain. Ooh, thanks for the reminder actually. I have a big thing of garlic butter, garlic herb butter in the fridge. We, are we gonna baste our steak with that today? Just pop a, a little bit of that on the steak as it's resting. I think we might. We just might. Smash can be fried on a griddle too. Good one, good one. I never even thought of that. That would be fun too. Little like pancake griddle, just flipping your smash taters. And yeah, the leftovers are endless possibilities, like smashed potatoes, leftover, heat them up the next day, pop some eggs on there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so roast 400F for 40 minutes, I'll say, since that's what the recipe says. And then, so the sauce, the sauce is gonna be made very close to when all of the food is done. I don't know if anyone's ever had Béarnaise sauce before or even a Hollandaise is very similar. Is it doesn't like to stay at room temp. It's hard to hold. So it can't get too cold and it can't get too warm. So that's why we make it only like, let's say less than an hour before you plan to eat. I would recommend about 30 minutes only. Yeah, compound butter is it. 
It really is blood oak. No idea what the sauce is, Weasel? Well, I'm happy to show you today. So dang good with beef. Okay, so first, before we make the sauce, we'll prep the broccoli. We just have this bag of florets. We'll cut them a little bit smaller, nice and like bite-sized, but definitely not too small that they'll fall through the grill, right? So I'll say broccoli, and then I'll just say dress that. Prep it for grilling, oil, salt and pepper is really all you need, but you can always add more flavor if you want. I thought it was a clown movie, Mish, please. I actually, you know what? I expected that movie to be uh, more scary. I actually really liked it. Like the weird kind of like humor in it. It's my style of scary movie for sure. Okay, last thing, Baronet sauce. And it was so cute yesterday at this store. The, the dude was like stocking all of the herbs on the shelf. So Sam asked him for tarragon. He picked through like every single tarragon in the front to get us the best one in the back. What a legend. What a legend. Okay, and then I guess kind of last thing is just grill the steak. And I don't see that taking longer than 10 minutes. Not longer than 10 minutes and then it rests for 10. So like total time 20. Nice, Kanara. Been using your air fryer rack on your grill for veggies. That's always good. I love grilling. Once it warms up, like so much stuff can just be cooked outside. 24 hour dry aged ribeyes. Game brain, you are eating good over there. Okay, I'm gonna pop my hair up. I think the dog went, has put herself down for a nap. I'll just double check. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, not much going on yet. I'll just uh, go for a nap and we'll come see you later. You don't own a grill yet. Keyword there, yet, right? Everything takes time. That means I also have to set up the outdoor camera later. Let's all uh, hope and pray that it decides to behave today for us. Good girl. She's zonked. She's ready to get zonked. Okay. Quick sip of coffee and away we go. What's everyone else's plans today? I'm actually going to pop up this recipe link so I can open them up for myself too. And everything's already in Discord too. So if you don't want to bookmark it on your browser, you can always go back in our Discord. Okay, so the grilled flank steak recipe that I linked from Food Network, I thought that this was the best one and most similar to like how I'm going to be cooking it today. So level, easy, gotta love that. Total time, one hour. Oh, I knew it, active time, 20 minutes, called it. Yield six servings, we'll probably end up with like, yeah, close to that maybe. I don't find that one flank steak is always enough for four people. So usually I do two and then whatever extras are so good to eat like cold the next day. You're going to do yard work and cook and beer. Love it, Weasel. There once was a Kate. She is never late, but boy, has she ate and she is nobody we can hate. <laughs> Lauren, thank you for that. That's actually the cutest. How have you been? That actually made my day. <laughs> Game brain. <laughs> Just fattening up your roommate. Yeah, so good to see Elsie Weens today. Okay, so marinade directions here. Combine canola oil, vinegar, mustard, garlic, oregano, parsley, rosemary, and Worcestershire sauce. Season with salt and pepper. He just sounds like he just throws it all in a food processor, but doesn't tell us to you. Pulse until the garlic and herbs are incorporated into the oil. Some people, man. <laughs> Sam was folding boxes and lurking. Build up that wall. What sauce? Worcestershire. 
Worcestershire. That one, weasel. <laughs> when the zombie apocalypse comes, your roommate will not be able to keep up, so you will win in the end. I see. I see your strategy here. I'm actually not mad. I'm impressed. Worcestershire. Bubba Army, please don't make me say it again. <laughs> Okay, so we'll do like similar ingredients. I'm definitely going to do the oil and vinegar. Probably not the mustard, but definitely like garlic. And I'm going to do different herbs. Like I don't really love oregano, but I will do thyme for sure. And a little bit of parsley. I've also had a really good flank steak marinade my mom used to make. She did a mixture of balsamic vinegar soy sauce. Nom. Also very nom. Shirt is pizza and skulls. Yep. Yep. It's a new one. I treated myself. Yeah, just don't say the R's. <laughs> the Worcestershire. What about the last one? I think we have to say that one. Okay, so I am also going to marinate this steaks, I think, in a vac bag? I don't know, actually. I might just pop them in a, like, half pan here. Just give them a little flipperoo halfway through. I don't love to use plastic, right? Because then it just goes in the garbage. So we'll probably just pop the steaks in here. Let's open it up. So it really is a dead pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Curious, Kate, how would you pronounce this? It's a city. Like New Hampshire? It's always like sure, it's not Shire, right? That's what my grandma taught me. She watched the stream once and she's like, don't say that like that anymore. It's Worcestershire. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, come on in. Wooster. Is that how you say it? Almost sounds like rooster. Good old M.A. Let's get this mouse out of here. Okay. So, what's the price point on these, actually? I think we get a better price just buying this larger amount all at once. So, uh, maybe not. Like, almost 20 bucks a kilo. And there's five kilos here. Are you actually, Weasel? That's cool. He's like, hey, I'm from there. Okay, so we'll open this up and then maybe actually I will get two vacuum seal bags down for the extras. Boom, this is my setup here. Dude, all of the bags and then the vacuum sealer on top. I think we'll need the biggest one possible. The largest. And then all I ever do is like fold over the top just so it doesn't get messy. Yeah, please roll up your sleeves and don't cook the meat like that, okay? <laughs> oh, how I've missed your trolling. Hi, Pepper. She's like, oh, this is the time for the meat. It's like wood and wood. Ah. Worcester. <laughs> it's an evil one. No. Heck yeah, Game Brain. I actually like love to read those things. When you guys say that to me in chat, been a key player in the development of my desire to cook more interesting stuff. I'm super practical, function over form, but I appreciate it and aesthetics in a big way. Thank you so much for saying that, Game Brain. And I'm very happy to be that person for you as well. Okay, let's pop this container up here. 
The less messy, the better, right? <laughs> you guys. Extra. Holy. We're getting crushed with love today, guys. I'm sorry that the audio is not going off. I literally have no idea why. What if I do this? I'm worried though that it might, uh, it might echo. Let me just try one thing here to get the alert audio up. Cause I know we're missing chicken wing song, chicken wing song. If I do this, can you hear it without having any echo? You hear Chimkin? Okay. I didn't want to talk just so I didn't talk over it. Perfect. Thanks, Mish. Okay. Thank you, Eric, for the 25 months in a row. Another over 20 months. Resub. Holy heck, you guys. Where does the time go? Hope you're good, my dude. <laughs> Hype, cheesy dude. <laughs> and Sloth, just rolling in. Mr. Slothman, gifting 10 subs out to our community. We are, uh well over our daily goal here so thanks everyone <laughs> let's welcome in bubbles stewart zollner m finko cyber hawk pat by the sea viking oreo caffeinated couple freesia oh i like this freesia ass off <laughs> bird portent ota tv one yeah a sloth attack very slowly <laughs> thank you i hope you guys have been well and scare a moosh with the 24 rub that meat i'm almost there okay we're almost at that point lauren with the five gifted subs to the channel you've already done 148 to the entire community dude abides bro chi delta kv the monkey lukey bears and christwa stop it mish says please and thank you, Game Brain, for a hundred. Yeah, y'all need to calm down. No, you don't. We're lying. It's Friday. Okay. Let's see what we're working with here. The meat's coming out of the bag. Oh, yeah. See, that one's, like, pretty small. One. That one's bigger. That'll be good then. Those two will cook up. One, two. And then let's open up. Stay there, meat. Don't even move. Open up the bag. Get that in. I think there's five? There's five in here. So it's just over five kilos, which means each flank steak is one kilo, pretty much. If you're a person that likes math and numbers. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the thing. That was close. You've just been meted. Nice to meet you. Yeah, salmon. Flank steak prices are high here. I think they're still high here too, but this is really worth it buying like five at a time if you can and like we're sharing with some people at work whoa this one's really thick i'll do two and one a twofer so you guys get to think of oh no it doesn't want to go in think of something else that we can do with flank steaks coming up Samo and I were thinking like maybe a sandwich on homemade ciabatta bread. That could be nummy. Okay, just gonna go wash my hand nose real quick. Right? Like I thought that was a lot of meat. Five flank steaks for a hundred bucks. Worth it. <laughs> One of these days we should add Mish's name on the list of fish to slap people with. You've just been slapped with a kiwi Mish. So does that mean you've actually just been slapped with feta then? A feta mish. Ooh, 
Ooh, maybe we can sneak some feta into the Middle Eastern meal on Sunday. I don't think we have to like make the marinade in the food processor, like how they said. I was just gonna use the garlic press to mince it. We'll hand chop our herbs and do it that way. A little bit less dishes. <laughs> Feta complains. Yeah, maybe. That is not a maybe. I know Greek wouldn't be upset. I was actually planning to do the lamb today and then I was like, wait. I know that Greek always is at work on Friday. So, alas, we switch it. We got a bonk in here? Hi, bonk. How are you? Okay, so see why I flipped this over? But the top seal doesn't get too messy. Venus, you don't have access to decent feta? Where are you at? Bonk is A-OK. -okay. You made it. You've been healed. I'm happy to hear that bonk. Sam actually had a one day cold this week or like a two day cold. Not COVID, we got some rapid tests. But yeah, just got rocked for two days. But he's back to work now. Such a wild week. Okay, moist. This is a uh, very moist. He lives! And thanks, Dust. I try and be. Whoa. When it starts to suck up the juices, press seal. Mmm. Steak sandwich. You'd love to make a gyro? Where can you order five pound gyro block? I wonder. Your town has none game brain? That sound just scared the living heck out of your cat, Mish. I'm sorry. Was it really loud? It's actually way less loud. Oh. Oh, that was so close. Look at the juices on the top. It didn't go into the, into the vacuum sealer. And asking about the food saver, Venus, this is actually the Anova. Anova, I think it's the Pro vacuum sealer. We've had this for what chat, like two years already, pretty sure. And it is very lovely. We did originally start with the food saver from Costco. And then we upgraded to this. And I will say it is just that little bit better. And I love how compact it is. Dang bonk. Yeah, a lot of people are thinking that right now too. Like, is it allergies? Is it just a cold? Who knows anymore, man? We're all just doing our best here. Yeah, we wore the Costco one out. It's true. You're very welcome, Venus. And I don't know if these ever go on sale. I know that their uh, sous vide cookers go on sale sometimes, but definitely watch, like sign up to their mail list. Cause yeah, you might be able to get this for like 25% off at some point. And I really like it cause it always does a double seal at the top. So even if like some of the juice leaks out the first little bit, it'll always seal. It's great. So yeah, those will just go, well, these two will go into the freezer, I think, for future use. And then our friend is gonna take the other one. I always just kind of wipe up this top part if it gets a bit juiced. Keep it nice and clean and sanitary. There we go. Done, so. And now we can marinate our two. Hi, DJ Beats. Are these expensive? Oh yeah, see Sam knows. They do go on sale and we just missed it. Dang. Yeah, 
I know Bonk. We were, uh, we have steak and eggs on the menu at work this week for one of the dishes. And I was like, you know what? I think I need some flank steak in my life, but I want to cook it. So that's what we're doing. And we are going to cook on the egg today too. We'll fire up the mini max. Oh, the sun's coming in. Sun's finally coming out. Close that up. Okay, I'll be back momentarily. 200 bucks or less? Yes. Yes. I don't think it's more than 200. I don't even know. It's probably more close to like 150. And yeah, flat iron steak's really good too, Bonk. How are the ticks up there, Lauren? Take off two to five a day on Luna. I mean, you guys do pretty crazy hikes though. I'm sure the ticks here are not that good. But Astra doesn't really go anywhere where there could be. So yeah, haven't really noticed per se. Do I need anything else while I'm here? Yes. Let us grab the herb thyme. Got that. That's mint. We got our tarragon. I'll save the parsley. Garlic thyme and some other stuffs. That'll be nummy. Olive oil. Do we want red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar? What are we feeling? Found one on your cat yesterday, Mish, a tick? Man, your cat must go some crazy spots then. Hunting in the deep grass. So let's do what? That handful of garlic for the steak marinade. $150 US FCB, you looked it up? Oh, I called it then. Thanks for looking it up. And so then when it goes on sale, it's usually like 25 bucks off at least. Let's do a lot of this. Yeah, hay fever, you get it, Bonk? I'm really hoping that I don't get it this year. Like when we moved here in the summer last year, I got just destroyed. Just take like two Claritins a day just to be able to stream. Do you guys remember like how bad my nose would be running and stuff? That was odd. So now we're just gonna pick the thyme off of the stem the best we can. Yeah, your mom's is in the forest. It looks so nice there, Lauren. Like a dream. You're taking it already, Dust, but it's not doing much, man. Well, I hope you guys get through it. Aw, Luna didn't even hike with you the last couple of times, Lauren, because they've been so bad. Well, yeah, you don't want her to get hurt, right? Yeah, it does. So that's usually how it gets on the island. We don't quite have the pollen yet because the trees haven't budded out. Still waiting on that one. GameBrain was searching up some gyro meat online, found some sources, had a good experience ordering and shipping five pounds of Italian beef to California 10 years ago. <laughs> cool. And yeah, Bonk, you have bad allergies too then. Sounds good, Kanara. Can I ask before you go, what's for lunch? What's on the menu? Yeah, in Austin, it was cedar. Oops. Brushing the time all over. There, it's the pollen. <laughs> we don't know which one's worse. Mots and hots? What's that? You smelling the herbage? You like the smell of it? She's really interested in the time. 
cheese stuffed onion rings. Game brain. All of these things you think of, like you could have an amazing unique restaurant with these ideas. I'm loving it. Yellow flowered mustard, mustard weed. And yeah, it's super warm there, Bonk. I am shocked that it's gonna be 20 degrees Celsius here today on the positive side. And then we get snow on Sunday. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab my knife, the garlic press. Hi, Squigs. It's been a bit. How have you been? Gonna have a sippa. Kanara's gonna do grilled cheese, use some goat cheese she has, and homemade mustard and onions. Deadly. Well, I hope you enjoy. It's never a bad day for grilled cheese. Never. And then I think, so instead of like trying to mix the marinade on the meat, we'll just mix it in a small container or bowl and then pour it over and kind of massage it in. I think that'll be the best. You've been good, Squigs. That is great to hear. Bacon grilled cheese, nom. I think the last time we cooked on the egg was like before Christmas. Isn't that wild to think? Like it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it has been that long. And a spoon. A spoon for stern. Weasel, you're so hungry. All you had was coffee today. No. You need some snackers. You need to get your snackers. Now we'll press our garlic. Whoa, Lauren. Finally got a flight back to Myrtle Beach. Vacation time is over. Prices were through the re roof though. I wonder why. That sounds yummy, Game Brain. Cheese stuffed onion rings, matzah inside, dry parm crumbs mixed in the breading. Like the craft parm, are you saying? golf season that is insane lauren one more do i do anything for easter or passover ever you know what thanks for the reminder venus I typically like to make hot cross buns and then we usually do like a smoked turkey. So that's probably what's going to happen next weekend. Oh no. Garlic's trying to run. Hi to Reno. Big oil greed. And he's sipping on his coffee. How's the week, my dude? That was one thing that I also said to Sam. I was like, it's kind of cool how like when we have to charge the car is we're like, if we go to a supercharger, we're basically reinvesting in Tesla as a company, which I think is pretty cool instead of supporting all the oil and gas companies instead. 
Okay, we might use the garlic press again, so don't put it away just yet. I'm gonna give a little wiperoo on the board. And then we'll add our liquids in here. A little bit of salt and pepper, but we will definitely season it more right before it goes on the grill. Some Mexican appetizers for Easter. And I don't actually know of like that many Mexican appetizers. What do you have in mind? How is electricity made to power it up? They all run off of solar. I think for the most part. What about a piece of wheat and white on each sandwich? What is that? I don't know what that is. Back to the leftovers discussion. Made shrooms, onions to top those 24 hour dried ribeyes. Yeah, had some leftover. Nom, mushroom onion rice. Wait, uh, Blood Oak made something similar to that before. Just recently. French onion soup rice, pretty sure. So we're gonna pop some olive oil into here. Mochi balls with bean paste shaped and painted like peaches. These are wild and Frisia ass off. Thanks for the follow friend. I love your username. We did that a bit this winter. So the oil just kind of helps coat the steaks. So you don't need a ton. Captain a click. Hello there. I got some jerk chicken marinating in the fridge now. Just got done brining the chicken. Nom. That is another one that's so good on the grill. Jerk chimkins. Do you make it really spicy? Okay, now we're gonna grab some vinegar. I think I'll go with the red wine. Some red wine vin. Yeah, I'm very excited. The truck's roof, putting some solar up there. Good one, Samo. And Torino, you're looking at solar panels? Couple small wind turbines. And yeah, tiny hamsters running on thousands of tiny wheels. <laughs> Imagine just like a wall of them just going round. Oh man. Jerk chicken and pineapple on pizza. Yeah, you said it, Dust. Come at us. I'd be into that. That should be good. You put way too many habanero peppers. R.I.P. tomorrow, then. <laughs> R.I.P. Four pounds of gyro meat is $35 plus shipping. Is shipping really expensive? Now let's do salt and pepper and actually one more liquid. The Worcestershire. It's at the top. Can she reach it? Yes. Ah. <laughs> do we have a truck command? I honestly can't recall dust whether we do or not. Cookie's like, let's see. So let's do only like a teaspoon. No more than a tablespoon of this. Just because it's hard for me to pour out of there. So it's more like a tablespoon. Truck, FT. I really don't know if we do. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> blame. Okay, so one pinch of salt right now. Just to get a little bit of seasoning on there. Crack some pep. Could have sworn we did. I will have to look it up after, Dusty. Yeah, it's almost, we're getting close to the time where we're gonna be able to insulate it. Cannot wait. 
hey, let's mix this up. Looks really good actually already. Kronos, five pounds is 42 bucks plus shipping. <laughs> 10 pounds worth, that's gonna be massive game brain. You'll take it all? Cause that means next year, you're just gonna have the best year ever. All of the karma is gonna come back to you. <laughs> and yeah, of course, anything on a stick is fabulous for starters. This is so true. Meat on a stick. I actually didn't even take the salt book out on our trip. It was kind of crazy. The last part of the trip dust, like we had some wild snowstorms, so I didn't feel comfortable like reading and having Sam like pay attention to me reading. So let's do that tonight. I'm gonna mention, it's like we're gonna make a new routine at night. Read for like 30 minutes before bed. Something a little different. I think I'll just pour all of this and just put on a pair of gloves and do a little massage-y. Smells really delicious already. Nice thick marinade so there's not too much extra left over in there after. I don't like to waste the marinade per se. I'd rather have it like all soak in. For sure, Dust. For sure. And yeah, to Captain a click. So the food truck, sorry I passed over your question. Sometimes chat moves too fast for me and I forget. So yeah, exactly what Cookie said. We have a Chevy truck. It's a C5500 with an 18 foot box on the back that we're gonna build out into like a mobile stream commissary kitchen, not like a full on daily used food truck. We're just not really into that type of food service anymore in our life. We're trying to specialize in some other things. Yum. Okay, let's do this bottom one. Give it a flip around. <laughs> Venus. I know that was autocorrect for you. That's why I'm just giggling. I wish I had something to massage. <laughs> okay. Do a little bit more massage in here. And look at it. It's like already changing the color of the meat. The little bit of vinegar. It's already breaking down some of that tissue. That's its job. Press it all in. Mm. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, Team Chevy, Lauren. Isn't that so funny? Like, we got a big ass diesel truck and then an electric car. Balance, you know? Everything in moderation. <laughs> Okay, we're putting the lid on and saying, see you. See you later. That's the other thing we're thinking, game brain. It might be more worth it just to buy like a little tent trailer to tow around. Yeah, you want my Suburban for the Tesla? <laughs> Lauren. Okay, see you. See you, Mish. Into the fridge they go. Beautiful. Man, that's gonna be good. Nice, we're keeping it pretty clean too. I'll just do one quick wipe up. Let's get rid of our marinade container and stuff. Excuse me. Yeah, your tank is 32 gallons. Ugh. I can tell. 
people here are trying to conserve their gas because they definitely don't drive nearly as fast on the highway anymore. <laughs> Mish fades. <laughs> yeah, when I win the lotto, I'll have a gyro party and you're all invited. Will there be feta though? No? We're dead. <laughs> you guys. Okay. Marinade steaks and vacuum steal the extras. Check. Oh. This is actually one thing. I don't know where it is. I'm kind of actually worried that it's in the car. I don't know where the baby potatoes are. So I'm going to go look in the fridge really quick. I don't know where Sam put them. Yesterday, I'm hoping that they're there. Because usually I bring them in here. Doach. Yeah, it's illegal to buy babies. Okay, I will be right back. You're tanking your Jeep is 21 gallons, Cookie. Yeah, you thought that was big. Trucks have like massive gas tanks, massive. Okay, I'll be right back momentarily. At the same time, I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna grab three eggs so that we can use the yolks for the baronet sauce. <laughs> oh, okay, on that note, I'm gonna share a story that my brother shared with me this morning. He went to go pick up more coffee beans from the coffee shop the other day here. And so they're like chatting it up while the lady's making the coffee. She's like, oh, like, what are you gonna go do today? And he's like, I'm buying a welder. And she's like, oh, cool. And like, keeps making the coffee and like starts thinking about it, right? Cause like most of the time people aren't just gonna be like, yeah, I'm buying a welder. She's like, so is that a person? <laughs> he's like, no, the machine. <laughs> I know baby potatoes missing. I'm gonna go find them bonk, hopefully. But if we could buy people, <laughs> he's like, I don't think we're allowed to do that. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Crisis averted. Baby potatoes have been acquired. Phew. It is so nice out right now. So dang nice. Seriously, like full on summer day out there already. Open these up. Usually I find that these are really nice and clean. And then I also have to ask or mention this. This company, because I know that they're like all over the world, lots in North America and the States. This is literally right here in Edmonton, the like, what do we call it? Factory warehouse. How cool is that? Like we literally drive by it every day after work on the way home. Yeah, you have them. So the, the warehouse is here. This is what they say. And hi, Kermit. Thank you for the 15 months in a row, friend. All of these long-term resubs, I can't. 
I can't do it. Yeah, these for smashing, right? So good, Lauren knows. So they say, since 1996, we have harvested our proprietary creamer potatoes only when they are mature. Richest in flavor and texture and at their nutritional best. I will say, all of the times that we get these potatoes, they're actually really tasty. Oh, this is so cute. As a mother, I promise there is nothing we serve you that I wouldn't serve my own family. Co-founder and CEO, Angela Santiago. <laughs> Sorry that I said it like that. It reminded me of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So yeah, red and yellow creamer varieties. And it's got really nice thin skin. So you never have to peel them. Yeah, so she's selling her own babies. I don't think we'll need all of these. Let's just fill up a little bit into a pot. And yeah, they look mostly clean. You can just kind of pick over what you think we don't want. Do this kind of medium sized one. So we'll fill up the pot and then we'll cover them with just enough cold water. Let's grab our little peeler for touching up any of these. Why are they called creamers? Mm, I actually don't know. I think it's how the flesh is dust. And yes, they are very good with duck fat. Shall we? Shall we, Lauren? I think we shall. I will definitely get the bucket out of the fridge, melt some down. Yeah, it's happening. It's all it takes. Please, twist my arm. And try and like pick the ones that are most similar size. Like some are definitely a lot smaller. Actually, I already peeled that one, so I have to use it. If you have to though, you could also like cut them in half to keep it consistent. I got slapped with the tuna. I'm gonna make some poke. Thanks, Mish. <laughs> I just read you're on the corner selling your newborn for feta. Please. Use the little eye cleaner. Hello, Greek Greco Greek. So good to see you today, my dude. And I will let you know right meow that we're cooking your pots and pans request on Sunday coming up. So I hope you can make it. Creamer potatoes are very, very young, small and tender potatoes. Younger even than the potatoes sold as new potatoes. So like they're barely in the ground then barely in the ground for any period of time. Thanks for that, pal. The potatoes will be round or slightly oval and can be any variety of potato. Nice. So it's literally just like baby potatoes. And yeah, they're good. Okay, let's do like this much more. Maybe not even, that'll be lots. Lots and lots. And yeah, I like this brand because they give good recipes on the back. How to roast them. Boom. And yeah, we're only cooking for us four today not mass mass portions like what will be going down tomorrow back to supper club a 
Let's sprinkle some salt on. And then we'll fill it with water. Greek, you had a good week so far? So this helps season the potato as they boil. But then I also find that we always need to add a bit more salt before they roast too. And we want to be pouring cold water over. Just enough to cover the potatoes. We don't need to fill the pot up. And then we'll get those boiling on this side while we prep our broccoli. You're helping someone move right now. And yeah, you're busy tomorrow. So that's perfect then. Oh, I'm so happy. And yeah, I'm very excited to cook the lamb. So I'll just do my little burner set on the side here. We just boil the potatoes. Usually it takes like 15, 20 minutes until they're soft. We need them soft enough to smash down, but not like exactly fall apart and mashable. How was the trip? It was so good, Greek. Yeah, the like riding or driving through the ice fields was insane we had like literally every type of weather possible blasting sun rain hail snow like complete whiteout blizzard it was fun though and the car did really well and yeah it was so peaceful perfect word for it we definitely needed that especially after the week we just had Yeah, that's right, Weasel. Like, everyone usually dreads moving, but I find, like, if you're working towards something new and exciting, like, it could be really fun. Although it is quite physical, right? So it's always a bit hard. And thank you, Game Brain. Boil potato. We'll just check that off. We'll dress them up after they've been smashed. Let's see what we're working with here. We can't go too small on the broccoli bits, otherwise they'll fall through the grill. So whatever really small ones are here, we'll just kind of pick through now. I would say max smallest size is like this, so this won't work. We even get some leaves in our broccoli. Holy. Boom. Bam. Yeah, new beginnings. Exactly, Clem. Wants to get into an actual house. She was in a townhouse before, wanted out of the strata. Ooh, I believe that. Vancouver is so crazy. Oh, oh my gosh, we'll definitely trim that one. That's not too bad though. Only like that for little bitties. Ain't so bad. Okay, so let's first just trim off anything that we don't want. Definitely that. And that size is good. Let's kind of aim for this size for all of the broccoli bits. And that way they'll all cook at the same rate. So yeah, anything that's kind of discolored doesn't look too good, just trim it off. Yeah, small ones fall through. They go from florette to a briquette. Just, just making some broccoli charcoal over here. It's trending. Yeah, so I've always thought of that Greek. It's like there's a lot of these plants that just people don't know if they don't grow them that is usable. Broccoli leaves, the cabbage leaves, like all of that is really yummy. 
but you never see it in the store. It's like trash, right? Very odd. Yum, Torino. You'll take all the small pieces, get some Caesar dressing, dip it in. That's a good snacka. That's good, Greek. Had basically the same money in the townhouse. That's a good switch. Glad it worked out. Yeah, broccoli sprouts, microgreens. You know, all the things that Torino grows in his closet. Because <laughs> he's a legend. Yeah, imperfect produce. I wonder if it, like, gets turned into animal feed or something? Like, what do we think, guys? Where does it go? Uh-oh, that one was a bit small. I guess we'll see what happens. Sacrificial. It's always nice to come home after working Monday to Thursday and like cook some real food, a plate with more than one component. Like how many liters of chili did Chris make this week? And like we served, I think we served close to like 300 liters of chili. It's insane, you guys. Yeah, the Brocco dust isn't quite as bad, Bonk. You're right. The cauliflower dust just has this weird feel into it. I can't. Okay, so let's put those maybe just in a bowl. Actually, I'm just gonna use the exact same container as we put the steak in. So it'll be nice to stack this up outside when we bring everything out to cook. So much chili, Clem. I know. Well, it's for 2,600 kids a week. And I had the cutest little helper boy help me yesterday with all of, like, the hot bags, we call them. We pack all the lunches in a hot bag so they arrive warm to the kids still. Just, like, taking them from my hand. He's like, no, I got this. I was like, what? Okay. It's like not a ton of broccoli. I don't know if I want to add some carrot or something. Do we make it spicy when it's for the kids? No, Mish. Like the max amount of like spice in there would just be chili powder and a couple of herbs. And then like the base of the tomato kind of sauce for the chili, we always blend it with like the onion, celery, carrot, and garlic. So they don't really know what's there, but it still flavors it and they love it. Yeah, grilled carrot is actually good, Clem. Just thinking like that's not a ton of stuff for us. I might grab a couple carrots. We got time. We got time anyways. I think I might cause we got a big bag go do that oh no Greek your net is effed up I'm sad because I realized my coffee cup is empty that's insane game brain there are only three stores with produce in your town next town is an hour away wow okay I'll be right back momentarily hold tight
Okay, I'm here. We got some carrots. More vegetables. And one of them is kind of sag. So we'll definitely take care of that. Squigs. Hey, I think I developed too much gluten in my cookies that I am supposed to bring to dinner tonight. No. Just call them crunch cookies. Just gotta sell it. How far down does this boo boo go? Eh, not that bad. Hello everyone, I have arrived with special crispy cookies, just like the recipe said. <laughs> That's all you gotta do, man. And they'll be like, oh, okay. Awesome. They're more like scones. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hello. I have arrived with cookie scone hybrids. It's a new recipe I found. <laughs> and then we have to cut the carrots a special way so these don't fall through the grill. Has anyone ever had grilled carrots before? Cause they're actually really lovely. You would think it's kind of weird, but like the sugars in the carrots caramelize really nice. They get really sweet. It's good. Yeah. Today I've made crispy cookies that are kind of like scones. You've had them dust, yeah. Yeah, possibly like almost a bit burnt. Like it really pushes the level of caramelization for sure, Greek. We'll watch him though. Part of me almost wants to like semi blanch them before we grill them. Although I don't mind if like cooked vegetables have a bit of crunch still to them rather than going mush. So do what works for you, right? Because everyone's palate is different. Grilled carrots, you're actually down for a bonk. Otherwise, nah. Had way too many as you were a kid. Yeah, such a staple, right? Okay, so we'll trim the ends. Boom. Potatoes haven't even come up to a simmer yet. You've only had them roasted or in a soup. So it's like similar to roasted clem, but like a bit different flavor because they were put on the grill. Hi, Cal Boop. Yeah, dessert scones, if you will. <laughs> we have breakfast scones, but these are dessert scones. Way fancier. Yeah, good one, Greek. Some honey. Toss them in a little bit of honey after they've been grilled. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, raw with some blue cheese dip bonk. At least you can have them raw still. So you're basically saying you've had maybe a couple too many mushy carrots in your life. What's up with the brock? Standard? I think we'll dress this with a bit of sweet chili sauce. I think I have some. That is so nice. I find if you're gonna grill vegetables, a little bit of that, some oil. Actually, I don't know if we have any. Must have used it up. We'll do something though. If anyone has suggestions, let me know. I do have this package. It was like a dressing. I think I am gonna use that up. Like a sweet chili. Yee. Okay. And yeah, the baronets on the side, right? Just kind of bring everything together. So to keep these from falling through the grill, obviously the small end, we can kind of just cut like that. Make sure we put across the grate, not the other way so it falls through. And then maybe two other long, long cuts through to keep it consistent on the bias as well. 
because if we keep it nice and thin like that, it'll cook quickly with the broccoli. If we cut it thicker, it'll be very crunchy in the middle still. Personally, the only time you actually like carrots is either in a fried egg rice or in sofrito. Yeah, sofrito is like such a good base for so many things. Go like really, really long. And then with this shape as well, if you see how the end goes really tapered, that's what's gonna caramelize really nicely. Lots of flavor. That one was kind of small. Might save that one for a good doggo. A doggo snack. Yeah, that's why we always buy like organic carrots Greek. Because I just find like the regular carrots at the store taste like cardboard almost. For sure. Do I have a ballpark time, like an hour? Yeah, come back in an hour. I would say we'll be starting to like get cooking at that point. For real cooking. We'll be done prepping. Boom. Okay, one more. That'll look so good on the plate. Green, orange, our sauce will have this nice yellow color to it. The steak will have this like nice pink and red color. So we'll cook it medium rare. Yeah. So now we can mix this all together because I'm gonna cook it at the same time. Okay, see you soon, Game Brain. See you in a little bit. I'm not gonna put any salt on this yet because it'll just draw out the moisture and I find it gets very wet. And then if you put it on the grill, it's gonna make it flare up. And then that flavor of the flame flaring up onto the food actually can taste like not so good sometimes, a little bit like gassy. So we try and not have those flare-ups as much as possible, but we can definitely open up this, get that kind of like marinating is nice. A little sweet chili sauce. And then we'll do a bit more olive oil just to make sure everything's coated so it doesn't dry out. <laughs> I remember we changed Zach's life, our friend on the island. First time we made him grilled broccoli. Just obsessed with it after that. Some olive oils. And then it'll take about like 20 minutes to heat up our grill today. We're gonna be cooking directly over the charcoal. So that's a little bit quicker, I find, for the preheat. Let's toss this all and I'll go wash my hands. Should be good. Yum. Yes, please. Garlic and herb on the steak. Gonna get, oh, I forgot to grab the duck fat last time I went back to the fridge. Duck fat, smashed potatoes, cause we're sick like that and Loris, Lauren uh, told us to do that. She put the idea in our head. Yeah, cameras, can't wait. 
it's been too long too long so that looks good like your veggies should have this nice glisten to them whether you're roasting or grilling them that way they won't dry out so that we can just put aside for now i'll just pop a lid on to transfer it later outside looks like our potatoes are about to come up let's give a wipe to the board and our knife And actually, maybe at the same time that we're doing the potatoes, we can do our clarified butter for the béarnaise sauce in a small pot. I think that's a good idea. Where are we at on this? Broccoli, dress, complete. So we're waiting for the potatoes to boil and then we'll smash them, dress those for roasting. And yeah, just the sauce and then cooking the steak. So let's bring this up. Gotta get back to work, Greek. Well, thanks for hanging out while you had the time. Don't work too hard today. And I hope it's a good one. Do you have as nice weather as we do today, Greek? You too, my dude. Okay, let's turn on this small pot. And we'll get a bit of butter. I think we need a little bit more than this amount. A little bit more than that. Usually go with like a third of a pound for four portions. Thank you so much, Greek. Looking forward to cooking your meal for you on Sunday. Nice weather, not really, no. That was Wednesday, Thursday, shoot. So we'll make the sauce before we go outside to grill. I don't feel like it's a smart thing to make it after everything's been cooked. Do a little bit more. That'll do it. And then I always have a measuring cup nearby that can hold up to the heat. So usually a glass one to pour the clarified butter into once it's done. Let's get that. This little guy, little Pyrex, have that nearby. What else? We're basically done with this stuff. We got our three eggs here to separate out. And then we're gonna save the whites for our dessert tomorrow our coconut macaroons because they use egg whites. So how perfect is that? Butter makes, yeah, like just about everything better. Speaking of butter. Okay, I think I'll go grab the duck fat right now while we're waiting. I feel like this is going to pop off literally as I leave. So I'll just turn it down a touch. Otherwise, the lid will be going nuts. So. Okay, I will return with duck fat and that's it. And I will take back our garlic and thyme and broccoli bits, hold tight.
Dun 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 dun. Not a small bucket. Not small. So, back to clarified butter for a moment. All I usually do to clarify the butter, and it's basically ghee at the same time, is just boil it. There's kind of two stages that you go through. I call them kind of like foamy stages, two foam stages. So the first one will like really bubble up. And then the second one, you'll start to see the butter clarify. And then when it does start to bubble, it's time to pour it out. Otherwise it's gonna burn. Yeah, just a bucket of duck fat. So we'll get some of this melted so that we can dress the potatoes with it. Look at that. Liquid gold. What do we want? Like half a cup should be lots. And then Sam said I have to pack some of this up for our friend Chris as well. Good to see our taters coming up too. Do, do, do. One liter of duck fat for Chris. So this is how it scoops out. We'll do that for the potatoes. Put Chef Mike to work. I'm so happy Lauren mentioned that. Sometimes I forget what we have over there. Steamy. Let's do like 20 seconds just to get it melted. Water. <laughs> Water. This is the first really warm day. It just like smells warm outside. Everything's just heating up for the first time since winter. It smells like warm plastic almost. It's like kind of odd. Whoa, butter's talking. It's kind of crazy that it's already Easter next weekend. Also, I'm excited because I, well, I already got Fridays off, but I get paid for it, I think. Good Friday. I mean, it's not a perfect liter of duck fat because I'd have to like melt it to get that. But we're packing it in there. Oops. Throwing it. Yeah, butter, duck fat, taters. What diet? Everything in moderation, Bonk. We eat a lot of salad during the week after work. So that's why I can basically cook whatever I want on the weekend. Get next Friday off as well. Yeah, nice long weekend. Hey! Lady Virgo Tarot is Scarlet Luna, just because I had a name change. Well, welcome friend, how have you been? Wanted to know if you needed or wanted your containers back. Up to you, up to you how you feel. Uh, like we're probably not gonna come and pick them up, but if you are gonna just toss them, I would just recommend putting them in the recycling if you could, instead of the trash. Yeah. 86.6 grams of duck fat in one liter. Thank you, Torino. Let's see if this melted in the fridge too. I'm just gonna bring all this back to the fridge. Yeah, I saw the turkeys in the store yesterday. I was like, what the heck? Why is there turkeys in this store? I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's Easter. That's right. Roll it. Right. 
Now the question is, do we fit this bucket in here? And the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Might be a bit precarious, but we can and we will. Okay, first foam, you see what I mean? It's like very foamy looking on top. You can barely even see the butter underneath. That's first foam. Is Easter the 17th? I actually have no idea, Kimmers. Have them washed so it doesn't matter. You will reuse them. Yeah, yeah, if you wanna reuse them for your own stuff, by all means. Okay, so 20 seconds on duck fat, not nearly enough. Not nearly long enough. And then why don't we prep our sheet pan for our smashed taters? I'm thinking one, I'm thinking one will be enough. We'll see if we need two. Yo, that'd be so fun to do like a scavenger hunt on stream. That's one thing I just thought of. How would that even be possible? I love scavenger hunts. <laughs> the memories from when I was young and my parents would like do that for my brother and I. So they'd try and like set it all up. And we always had like pets growing up, cats or dogs. What would the cats do? Ruin the entire scavenger hunt overnight. Just knock all of the little like eggs all over. Savages. They're like, this is for us, right? Okay, we're almost done the foam stage. Shall we? Take our knife and poke a potato. Not quite there yet. Maybe six more minutes. Okay, finally melted the duck fat. Holy smokes. That's why I called it liquid gold. Look at that color. Nom. Do we want? Nah. I don't think we'll do more garlic on the taters. I think we'll just do a nice coarse salt maybe on top. That's always good. Okay, so first foam stage is almost gone. When it gets to this point, I kind of like swirl, swirl to the outsides. Get it evenly cooked out. Just do a shot of duck fat. Funny you say that, Mish. So we used to have a community member here called Buff Bagel. And one time on stream, he got Sammy to do a whiskey shot with a layer of duck fat on top. It was actually good. It was actually really delicious. <laughs> How much garlic? That's a yes from dust. Still one of my favorite emotes that Joyce made. Okay, where are we at? I was at looking for some salt. Fancy salts, let's get them. What am I feeling like in here? Got a lot of smoked salts, but I will say I don't really love them. They were like all gifts. Sweet Caesar pleaser. I think we'll do this one. Keep using up these. Oh, the butter's getting close. Hello, Ernest, how are you doing? 
And I want to say, sorry I didn't answer your message yet. We had an insane week at work. Half the staff was, like, sick. I'm not even exaggerating. So, yeah, I'm just catching up here, trying to survive. Don't know if anyone else has used this brand before, but this box has bacon salt. I'm going to go for the garlic rosemary one. Smoky espresso salt and then molten hot. Bit of the same there. Oh, well... Glad to hear that you're all right, or hopefully you're all right. Okay, look at this now. See how it's looking more and more clear? So we're getting close. The smoky espresso, I've always wanted to like just cover an entire prime rib and make a roast beef with it, Mish. And this, I think you can get it in the States as well, Dust. Amola is the brand. So look it up. And this was a gift to us. When we were working in Vancouver at the Brew Pub, like we had so many customers that we did like special events for, they would always come back and like thank us and like give us a couple little things. Like they even brought Sam beard oil one time. It was wild. So yeah, look it up. I'm not sure if there's some retailers in the States that carry it. So yeah, duck fat, rosemary, garlic, salt, potatoes. Let's try these one more time. If you poke your knife through and always go for like the biggest one, right? You know you're good. So like that looks pretty good to me. Try one more. We'll just let them sit in that water for a moment and then I'll go strain them. Don't want to go anywhere because the butter's almost done. So now the bubbles are getting bigger, right? As it clarifies, all of the dairy solids are kind of going to the bottom of the pot. When you Google that, the first result is 10 kilos of sea salt for what looks like an aquarium. Oh my gosh, Mish. A mola sea salt? I don't know. Mmm. Baronese sauce coming up soon. I think we'll do the baronese. We'll get the oven heating for the potatoes and then we'll go light the egg. Okay, see this stage? We're getting close. This is the second foam butter stage. So I kind of just swirl because it's a bit hard to tell the color of the butter under the bubbles. And like you could push it to browned butter when it starts to smell a bit nutty, but don't go darker than that. Mm, it's getting there. And the reason we take the butter out of the pot at this stage is because it'll keep cooking and it will burn just from the residual heat in the pot. Okay, I think we're there. We're gonna go for the pour. Perfect. And then I'll show you the bottom of the pot, how it looks. So look at how all the dairy solids basically cooked on the bottom. And then we're left with this golden, perfectly clear butter. And it's really good to do that if you're like a popcorn lover as well. Clarify your butter, because I find that it's the milk, the dairy and the butter that makes your popcorn soggy. And then I would recommend if you're gonna do this, go soak it right away. I'm, that's the other thing, Cookie, is like, Pretty sure I saw a liter of ghee at the store is $20. $20? What? Just make your own. Soaked. 
And I suppose I'll go strain the taters now too. Yeah, the margins must be ridiculous. And then this is my other thought. It's like, what does a ghee factory look like? <laughs> How is that mass produced? Do they just have like a massive pot of boiling butter? <laughs> Dust, you found the salts online? Sweet. And so I have to ask, have they come out with like any other varieties or do they still just have the same four? This, I think I'll bring some hot cloths just cause steam is scary. Yeah, Palooza for the Googling. How is ghee made? Hey, goo goo. up on the trivet so I can get my burners out of here but we will be using them momentarily so don't put them too far because we still got to make our bearnays only ones you found were the bacon ooh black truffle molten hot on the rosemary can't find the variety pack though and that's what you want dang it oh Mish that was one of my favorite shows growing up today on how it's made. Loved it. Back on over. Straighten this out again. Come back a little bit. Lid off. So these are gonna roast at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I just use a masher to get them smashed down. Just a potato masher. Really? They used to have all the episodes on YouTube, but you think the channel got deleted? Probably like copyright, hey? That'd be amazing. Okay, so as we smash these, I kind of lay them out where they're going to roast on the pan because it's going to expand in size, right? Ah, Discovery Plus. It's like five bucks a month. I guess we could also download them. That's the other option. Okay, so here's one thing I read in the recipe for the smash taters that I linked for you guys. The thinner you smash them, the crispier they'll be. The less you smash them, the more like fluffy kind of mashed potato they'll be inside. But I kind of go just like medium, medium smash. So we get a bit of both, crispy and fluffy. Just like that. Yeah, how it's made, almost mandatory for my education. <laughs> Not a great day to be a potato at all, Squigs. Smashing them all. Boil them, smash them. Stick them in the oven. These are some of my favorite things to make. Probably one of my favorite potato recipes, especially for baby potatoes. How do you open a ghee factory is the first Google result. Let's go Mish, are we opening one? I 
need to click on it. Let's go. A step-by-step -step guide on how to start a game making business in India? The homemakers in the age group 25 to 45 having children are the main consumers of ghee. So it's a highly rewarding market for beginning an organized ghee manufacturing business. <laughs> we need an agitator, steam control valve, pressure temperature gauges. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here we go. It's legit. Okay, we're having a ghee truck then. We're making the truck into a ghee factory. It's decided. It is legit. Everyone's like reading the article right now. They're like, actually, this sounds like a great idea. Might just do it. Are we gonna have enough room on this one sheet pen? We might have to commingle some of these a bit closer together. Just don't overlap them. It's okay if they're like kind of touching. Just don't pile them up. Otherwise you'll get steam potatoes, not crispy potatoes. The ghee truck. <laughs> Yeah, Misha's starting the first ghee factory in Northern Europe. Oh no. Okay, sometimes that happens, but you can just like kind of tap, tap the potato off of the masher if it got stuck a bit. I can tell these are gonna be really good because they're already super like fluffy inside. So when we dress these with the oil, mm, we are gonna have just enough room. I might put this one in the corner. Just pop that over there. That was a pretty good guesstimation of what one sheet pan would fill out. Pushing the limits here. Put that little one in there. Oh man, can we do it, Chad? I think we can. Phew. Maybe just enough room. Whoa. Never give up. Never surrender. There we go. <laughs> how it started, how it's going. <laughs> you can tell we started here and it just got messier and messier. Perfecto. Thanks, Cookie. And hi, Night Wanderer. How are you? Okay, so let's get rid of this. Get rid of this pot lid that I didn't use. Garlic press is not needed. Same with the veggie peeler. And now we got our duck fat coming in. Mmm. Smells like clarified butter on the other side of that curtain. Really good. I gotta turn that light down and that one up. Okay, so first, we're just gonna drizzle whatever type of fat you would like for your potatoes. Yeah, nice, Mighty Quill. Finally done unpacking the house. That's right. I'm glad to hear it. And like, we do want a pretty good amount of fat on here. So try and distribute the duck fat and then 
you feel like we need more, we can always do a little drizzle of olive oil. But it's the fat on these that make them super crispy. So definitely don't skimp. It's like a little drop on each one. It looks like the white potatoes don't stay as moist as the red skin potatoes. They get more dry. Actually looks good. You can see though, like there's not even any residual fat on the sheet pan. This potatoes just like soak it in. Okay, now our garlic rosemary salt. Just going to, I think, sprinkle some of that into my hand. Whoa. The duck fat smells nutty. Between that and the clarified butter, just like what is going on in this kitchen? All of the smells. So we can always add more salt after it's cooked, but we did already salt the water that these boiled in. So I would hate for them to be too salty. So we'll definitely test later when they come out of the oven. If it needs a little sprinkle, then we can. It's not too late. Now just some nice cracked pepper over all of this and that's ready for the oven, which I'm gonna actually turn on and get heating up. And then we're gonna work on our béarnaise sauce. Gotta grab the tarragon from the fridge and get that chopped. Yum. Okay, smash potatoes. Duck fat smash potatoes. Okay, on. Oh, that's why I was like, why didn't it turn on? Because we unplugged it when we went on the road trip. That's why. Those are the sounds of the oven people. <laughs> that timer kills me every time. Okay, so between 400 Fahrenheit and 425, let's say, for the temp to roast those, to crisp them up. And then we'll put our little salt back. one wipe of our area because we made a bit of mess. Awesome. We have our eggs. We're gonna crack these into, I think we'll do this bowl to make the sauce in. And then we're gonna save the whites for tomorrow's dessert. So crack it over a small container. Or just crack it into that and then fish your yolks out from there. Try your hardest to not break the yolk in the white. Otherwise we can't use it for dessert tomorrow, I don't think. Uh, you know what, scratch that because we're not really making meringue for the macaroons. The egg just gets mixed with the coconut, so it actually would be okay. Whoa, okay, half of the shell went in just now. Fishing. Boom. 
Uh oh, I did break that one. Totally. I don't know if it was me or when the shell broke. And like, it's okay if there's a little bit of egg white in with the yolk, it'll just make your sauce a bit more light. Cause like you'll whip air into it. That's all. So some chefs actually do that for their hollandaise if they don't want it like as heavy. They'll add like a couple whole eggs in instead of just yolks. Destroyed cookie. Destructed it. I love how I'm like, be very careful. <laughs> and then that happens. <laughs> Typical. Okay, I'll read through the recipe next. Just gonna grab some tarragon. Yeah, all Bonk's fault. That looks nice too. So this is what you need to make Bernays. And then the recipe I linked is from Ricardo. He says Bernays, the best. Really, is it though? Makes approximately one and a half cups, which I think is accurate. So yeah, we have, this is almost perfect actually. I didn't even try. He's like three quarters of a cup of butter, but he just melted his. He didn't even go through all the effort we did. And he calls it the best. Are there bears in bearnaise? I don't think so, Mish. I tried to come up with something like funny there, but I couldn't think of anything. Annie would be disappointed. Okay, so a little bit of white wine vinegar we want. He does a little bit of shallot chopped as well. And he actually did four egg yolks to that amount of butter. But I think I'm just gonna keep the three. And then one tablespoon of chopped tarragon. I think I got shallots here, maybe. Let me check my onion bin. There's some sneaky shallots in there. Ha ha, there are. There really was. The bare minimum. Only if you use bare butter. We're gonna do like half of this shallot. And then, so in a saucepan, we're gonna bring vinegar and wine to a boil with the shallots and tarragon sprig. Season with pepper. Reduce until there's like three tablespoons of liquid, it says. And then he says to strain it. But I like the shallots in the Bernays sauce. So the only thing I'll really strain out is the tarragon sprig. And then we're going to add that into this bowl with the egg yolks. That's gonna go on to a double boiler that we're gonna set up on the burner set. And then we can start adding the butter in. Keep at room temperature. Just before serving, place back on the double boiler or in a nice warm spot. Whisk it just to warm it up. Hi Blondie, how are you? Are you here, my dude? Are you here right now? And so, since we're not going to strain the shallot out, we're gonna practice some knife skills. Nice like brunoise, let's say. The smallest cut that we are taught in cooking. We'll do that half shallot. It looks like it's trying to sprout a little bit. Boom. It's so small. You'll be here next Friday. Oh, word. Good, because honestly, we had a week 
and I don't even think I have the energy to like really fully socialize with humans so that's good that makes me happy <laughs> okay so we're going to follow the natural curve with our knife of the shallot and then we can see the lines already running this way that's the way we want to cut it as small as possible Use your index finger to guide your knife blade. I'm left-handed, so I switch kind of weird when I get close to the other side. So that's what we want. Like, look at all those nice cuts. And then we go back through the other way to make the fine dice. And then usually I only cut up to this point anyways, because that's like the onion butt. Doesn't break down much. I consider that a discard. And then yeah, if you see anything that kind of snuck by, just give it a little chop. You don't want any big shallot pieces in there. So I guess I'll make this in our little Le Crusette pot. And whoa, that's strong. It's already hurting my eye. Strong shallot. Yesterday, Mish, you had a halloumi for the first time. I bet it was delicious. Mmm, now I want that. It was so nice and salty, Cookie says. Yeah, like creamy, salty. So much good cheese flavor, I find. Okay, so this is all I did open up this view for us again. Shallots into the pot. Grab our white wine vin. Served it with a fatouche. That is such a good combo. I know what that is. It's a really yummy, like, bread salad. And hi, Lily. I find the skin on shallots so annoying to try and peel. Sometimes they're just a pain. But yeah, they can make the difference in some recipes, especially these, like, kind of fancier sauces. It's so nice. Bacon and scrambled eggs in your Lake Cruise set this morning, Dust. Love how easy it is to clean. Mm-hmm. I do love my enamel. And yeah, fatouche. Is it Lebanese? I think you're right. So let's do like a tablespoon of this. I think that's what he said. Oh, no, more than that. A quarter cup. So just a little bit more. Quarter cup is not much. Boom. So very similar to hollandaise, right? Because usually we start a hollandaise sauce with, I do apple cider vinegar or lemon juice, and then a hot sauce mixed with the yolk. So same, same, but different. And then I guess we'll just take that one sprig and that'll kind of get flavored into the wine as well while it simmers. And then we'll take some more of this and chop it to add into the sauce once it's done for a nice little hit. Yum, Mish. Yeah, if you want, you can post that in Discord because I'm sure not a lot of people know what that is. The last time we made Baronets was actually for Mish if I can recall correctly. Okay, so this is grass. It looks similar to tarragon, but we don't want that. Yet when Mish requested her pots and pans menu, steak with bearnaise. That was so good. Isn't it so good, Blondie? Like, especially with steak and potatoes. And then we're gonna do grilled broccoli and carrots as well to go with everything. Should be a nice composed dish. Okay, 
I don't even think I've ever had Veronese in a restaurant. I don't think I've ever had it made for me. I've always just made it for myself. So this we save until the end. So I'll just pop that in a small container. Mmm, smells good already. It's our oven. Not quite hot for the potatoes, so that's good. Give this a wipe. Then we'll get our burners back up here. Baronets varies from steakhouse to steakhouse. Have you, what's like the best one you've had from where, Blondie? And Cookie, you've asked for it as a side at restaurants, but they never make it classically. No, they probably use like the Knorr powder. No. Mm, I might put a bit more vin in there. I put a little bit more vinegar in there. And then I love combining the vinegar with the shallot. I don't know if you can see, but it makes the shallot go like this really vibrant kind of pink purple color. It's almost like a quick pickle, right? The Knorr powder is pretty impressive for coming from a packet. That is actually true. But you can make that pretty good if you put a bit of extra love into it, but you need the extra love. And hello, Annabella. How's my day? So far, awesome. How is your day going? And Blondie, you prefer a thicker one? I think me too, right? Because it has to coat the stuff properly. Okay, while we wait for that, let's make a little double burner. Just go fill a pot with like, or sorry, double boiler. Did I say double burner? Double boiler, fill this with like an inch of water only. That's it. Thickest and best Bernays you had was at a steakhouse in Bellevue across from Seattle called John Howie's. Nice. Mish, as I'm always told, the Bernays should be thick enough so your spoon will stand upright. Is that how they do it in Danada? this boom rock that and this is the moment i'm gonna take a quick bathroom break so i'll be right back
back. Okay, nothing's really working yet. That's okay. Got the tarragon. We have our clarified butter. And we have our yolks. There's three there. I accidentally broke one. I'm sorry. I'm gonna take the steaks out of the fridge so those can kind of temp up. Get prepped for the grill so they're not cold, cold going on there. Take these couple of things back while we're waiting. Lower Gamps, hello from Norway. Just looking to see what you make in those pots. Welcome. Yeah, we have a couple Norwegian viewers, so good to have you. Feel free to ask away any questions. This is an educational focus stream. And right now we're working on a Bearnaise sauce, similar to Hollandaise, but it has tarragon, shallot, some white wine vinegar in it. Thanks Mish for posting the recipes. And yes, I'm bringing the garlic herb butter back to put onto the steaks to rest. And yeah, while this is reducing, don't get too close to the pot unless you're like trying to flush your sinuses out. Just waft it. Because it is strong vinegar smell. One crazy uncle, yeah you are. I'm here for the food. We love crazy uncles. This is a garlic herb butter. Put on this steak once it comes off the grill. And then look at our steaks. Look at that marinade. It just like sealed on. Whew. Vinegar almost made me cough going around the container. We did olive oil, fresh garlic, fresh thyme. Uh, what else? Salt, pepper, and red wine vinegar was our marinade on the steaks. So we'll do a bit more season before they go on the grill. This is our stack. This is our stack to go outside, our meat and our veg. The vinegar is even hurting my eyes. <laughs> Woo wee! I'm not dying, I swear. <laughs> Hi, Daph. It's been beautiful barbecue weather here. Just did a pork butt last night. I'm literally crying. It's so dang strong. I can't. You've been to Denmark many times, Laura Gams. That's cool. And yeah, you got here just in time, crazy uncle. Almost maced myself, honestly. The reduction will get you. We're almost there. We want three tablespoons of liquid left, they said. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna wash off my chef's knife. And then I don't really have a garnish for the plate today. What do we feel? A little bit of like green onion sliced. Whoa, sorry. Hit this thing with the cloth when I grabbed it. Gotta leave this area for a moment. Whew. Yeah, green onion or chive, I'm thinking. Those are the good options. We'll do the nice thin ones. Okay, that's almost there.
<laughs> You're getting too old to take the ferry anyways. Nice. Okay. I think we're there. Turn that off. And then I will take the tarragon out right now. And then we want some of this liquid still. That's why I take it right off of the heat. Let it cool off a touch. <coughs> ooh, ooh. <Woo> <laughs> before we pour it in the yolks. Holy smokes, guys. I didn't think it would be that strong. So, double boiler. It's warm, not quite hot yet, but we'll get those warming up. That's kind of key to making the sauce. It's just such a confined area in here. And then the windows in front of me don't open, so there's like no way to let the vinegar out. Deadly. So let's whisk this up while we're waiting. Yeah, when you've reached 50, you know that it's time to slow down. Things don't just like work the same anymore, right? Some things are harder. Okay, so just catching up with our list here. We're making the béarnaise sauce. Last thing, which I should also say grill steak and veg. And I think I'll do this is my thought right now, whether I want to do the veg first or the steak first. I think I'll do the steak first. And then see how this is getting more pale instead of the really vibrant yellow? That's, that's also what we're looking for. It's kind of prepping it for accepting all this butter that we're going to put in. Kind of scared how this bowl keeps tipping over. I'll try not to stress about it too much. Okay, so now coming over. Wow, the shallots soaked up a ton of that liquid. I'm gonna pour this and then scrape out the shallots from the pot. Stir that in quickly so it doesn't cook the egg per se. And then make sure you always go around the edge of the bowl because it'll start to cook the yolks. And we really only need this like barely simmering. We definitely don't want the double boiler actually boiling underneath. Stay. I'm just going to get rid of this. And this. Don't need that anymore. Haven't made a ton of dishes yet today. This makes me happy. Hi, Amp. Yeah, it is so nice here today. That's why we're grilling outside. I was like, I am not doing all my cooking inside. Okay, I can see the egg. It's getting a bit warm. I think we're also gonna switch all the way down over here too. Just to take it off of the heat, if it gets too hot, then the egg's gonna cook before we even add the butter. So our clarified butter. And thank you, Corgon, good to see you as well. As Vion! How are you? So now we're just gonna slowly drizzle the butter as we whisk. And it's gonna get thicker. This is also the same way they make mayonnaise. Just with eggs and oil instead of butter. And 
And then one other thing I like to do is take some of this warm water. I'll just get a small ladle and put a little bit of that in when this starts to get too thick. And that'll kind of lighten it up and it will accept more butter. Okay, let's see how this is. So see how that emulsified? Looks really good. You can go a bit more butter. Nice. There we go. Where it like basically sticks in the whisk is the thickness we want before we add water. Didn't I kill you in my dreams last time or something? <laughs> what? And so not a lot of water, right? Like maybe a tablespoon worth. Obviously stir when we add this because it's hot. That thins it back out. Like I said, kind of lightens it up so it's not as heavy with just egg and butter. That's like such a chef trick. I don't know if anyone else has been shown that before. And now we can add the rest of this. And then we'll definitely have to add some salt and it's like optional whether you want pepper in your sauce or not. And then I will also say this is optional to add into your sauce too, all the little brown butter bits. I usually do, especially if I'm cooking for myself, just that bit more extra flavor. Insane. Flavor bits, exactly, Cookie. And now, one of the last things we do is we can add our chopped tarragon in now. I'm just gonna get rid of this since we don't need it. We're laughing, ha ha ha. That is crazy, Mish. That's like a really crazy dream. Holy, that vinegar destroyed me, guys. My nose is just running. I love to hear it, Vune. That makes me happy. I actually have to go blow my nose. Okay, now I'm back. What's the last thing you cook Japanese? Man, that was crazy. Vinegar cleanse, if you will. Let's have a taste. See how much salt we should add. Yes, yeah, upload some pics, please. Spread the deliciousness. And nice, Cookie, you did your taxes. I think we're gonna wait this year. I think we're waiting. The government's doing weird stuff pertaining to like the COVID uh, monies that they sent out. 
So we're just going to let them figure out their stuff and then do it next year. Mmm. That's good. Defo salt, just to bring out the flavor of everything else. It's lacking feta. Joke's on you. It doesn't need it. Mish. We'll try this again. And I think I'll just put this on the trivet above the oven to stay warm. Mmm. Okay, just a bit more salt. Salt balances acidity and also makes things taste more flavorful. I pay people to do my taxes. Yeah, I do as well, Vune. I do as well. But yeah, right now the government's like, yeah, so uh, remember that money we gave you when everyone got laid off and had to quarantine at home? Yeah, we're gonna need that $2,000 back. <laughs> like what? Mish, do they not have income tax in Denmark? I'm moving there. And that's cool dust. Also, hello, Troy's Web, who we also know as Game Brain. Yeah, thanks for the hundred biddies, friend. Oh, that's so smart, Cookie. Jamie Oliver uses a trick putting this sauce in a thermos. All of mine are at work, like my coffee thermos. Otherwise, I totally would have. Yeah, exactly, Bonk. Yeah, we're going to need that back. They're like, don't worry, we've made payment plans for everyone, so it's not stressful. <laughs> sus. I'm going to just chalk that up to a sus, if you will. Not having it. Hey, this is what we're going to do next. I'm going to just actually leave the whisk in the sauce because we will need to mix it up again before we serve. What if I try this? Just like a little layer of plastic over the bowl to maybe help that film from developing. 11 grand. That's the other thing they said. So get this, they're like, oh, and by the way, if you're on EI, like employment insurance, we're just gonna take half of your stuff that we're supposed to pay you to, to make up for that was like what those poor people like they're already struggling hi bubbly yeah let's try this let's try that but back to cooking <laughs> back to cooking oh what this is what i'm gonna do remember i put my double boiler up on the trivet we're gonna put the bowl on the double boiler Boom. How am I doing? I'm doing good. Happy to be streaming today with everyone because the week at work was a week. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, I'm going to set up my outside camera right now. Let's all cross our fingers that it actually decides to work today and we're going to go light the, the fire outside. Got my gimbal here. Hee hee hee, nice Clem, I like that. Yeah, I already spent all that money, so sorry. That's funny. Boom. Put that on there. Bum. Definitely got to get that charge in, so I'll do that. Whoa, a party size Stouffer's lasagna? How many people are you feeding? <laughs> I know, Bonk. I know. Three pound lasagna? Bake it, dump it in a Pyrex. 
maybe add some ragu and parm. Yeah, like zhuzh it. We've been using this word at work. Zhuzh it up a bit. Okay. Do, 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 do. Close, close, close. Let's do a restart on the task manager. These are all the things that I have to do. Epoch cam, restart. How's everyone doing today? Hey, Carses. Three pounds seems like just the right portion. <laughs> We're doing good, how are you? And Bubbly, how do you make guacamole? <sighs> Take some avocado, crush it up. Add some lime, cilantro, garlic, salt and pepper, dunzo. I'm gonna have to bring this over so I can plug it into the computer door. It's actually five pounds. Uh, by the way, it's actually a five pound lasagna. Oh my gosh. I didn't hear a sound. Wait for it. I think my system sounds are just off today. I'm going to definitely do a restart on this computer later. Auto. Wi-Fi. Hey, okay. Unplug. So far. So good. Turn this this way. Test the scene. Test, test. You heard some system sounds? Okay, it's just on my end, then it's really quiet. And that's okay. I got like the oven going, a fan going here. Yum, Corgon. You're smoking salmon in the morning, brining overnight. What's your brine? Oh, and the gimbal, just catching up here for you. It's a... DJI Osmo. Ah, what a crazy view. We've had it for like quite a few years. Happy with it. Definitely. You're very welcome, Bubbly. How to pickle veggies Japanese style? I don't know if I've ever had Japanese pickled veg. Okay, test, test. Please work. Yes. Okay, I'm going uh, to put the tripod under then, since that did work. We're going out. Mom's taking you outside. Everyone behave. Brown sugar, salt, water, a little spice mix you made. Yummo. That'll be good. That's what we usually do our uh, salmon brine with. Okay, and then we'll pop the potatoes in the oven too. Yeah, are you asking us out right now, Kate? <laughs> yeah, you can take that whatever way you want. We're going out. Just gonna wrap this up a bit more. I'm so excited. It's been way too long since we did this. And then just gotta plug my phone in. This is the entire setup. Yeah, I love road trips. <laughs> <laughs> the rice vinegar is so mild you usually just don't like the pickled stuff that's actually a good one view and you would like that because yeah it's kind of sweeter phone case matches the shirt you you know i love purple okay i'm not gonna mute while i bring this out 
but I'm not going to switch the scene just yet. Hi, doggo. She's like, hell yeah, we're grilling. We be grilling. Which way do I want this? I think over here. Might have to go the other side since the light's a bit sus. Whoa. Crazy car stuff happening. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's check it out. Are you coming to check, Puffers? She's like, I have roasted myself. She's panting. Shopping spree in an Asian supermarket? What? Then I got Mish post and recipes. Discord is just the best. Oh my gosh, view. That looks so good. Mmm. What is that second plate? Teriyaki chicken and soy braised bok choy? I'm coming over. Holy! Crazy shopping. 130 euros, that's so cool. Okay. Is this what I want? Look at all the eggs. Or... Do we just go full that one? I think that one looks really good. But first, before we go out there, we are going to put the potatoes in. I will set a 20 minute timer because that should kind of be the halfway point. So boiled baby potatoes until they're nice and soft. Then we just smashed them down with a potato masher melted duck fat and poured that over and then did a garlic rosemary salt and pepper tomorrow you're gonna buy nagaimo root i hope i said that right nagaimo for okonomiyaki leaving your wife at home so she can't veto your spontaneous purchases he is into it yeah film it okay 425F. I might actually just turn it down to 400 now. Let's do a timer. Not a 40 minute timer. Let's cancel that. Hey Siri, 20 minute timer. Nice, Blood Oak. Good job. Post workout shower. Good one getting your body moving. Okay, let's go see if we still know how to light a fire. <laughs> oh, wrong one. I'll just go full outside. Hey, see you out there. And I will bring my iPad so that I can read. Hello, chat. Maybe I'll have to bring Samos. Okay, come on, pup. Let's go, puppers. Whoa, Twitch just blarred. Pop 
pop this up over here. Ha ha ha. Amazing. Collect points for Samo. The Traeger out in the background though, right? Okay. Let's open this up. I already took the top lid off. It was just like that. Open. Also, you can see down here, I'm opening the vent. I'm gonna peek. There's not too much ash, so we have good airflow still. I did not bring a glove out, but luckily this is not too dirty. So take the grate off. From here, I'm gonna use my little stir stick. And we're going to fluff up the charcoal to let any loose ash fall down. Otherwise it'll bung up those air holes and you won't have as even as a fire as you want to cook over. So that looks good, pretty good. Mm, is this like sideways in here? What is happening? Oh, the fire catches, okay. After this cook today though, we are defo gonna do a vacuum. Next one, I'm gonna pour in some charcoal. That might be a bit noisy. Take a bit of this out. Keep a couple big chunks. They hold the heat really nice. That should do it. Fun. And now all we're gonna do, this is the biggest chunk I think I poured out. So we're gonna like build this fire kind of up in the center to get it lit. And then we can break it down afterwards even out the heat on the coals. So kind of like basic fire making principles of making a little teepee sort of structure. And then right beside is our igniter from Brig Green Egg. Just a really high powered like hair dryer pretty much. It's got a heat element there and it blows at the same time. But this one is a little bit different than the loof lighter because you only have the settings like to do heat and then the other way goes fan. So yeah, start putting it on the charcoal, go with the heat setting first, and then you do your fan after. Is it plugged in? Oh, it's not plugged in. Say a word. And then I think Sam's going to be home pretty soon, too. He might already be home. That's where the dog went, probably. All out of Alderwood for smoking fish. Guess you'll just use hickory, not going to the store. Yeah, it might be a bit strong. As long as you, like, control the heat, though, you should be good. So right on the charcoal, pull back. And away we go. And then this will take about 20 minutes to get the coals hot and evened out to cook over. Yahoo! And I really do like the Big Green Egg charcoal because I find it lights super easy and like holds the heat too.
Is my lens a little bit dirty on my phone? I'm gonna check it. Otherwise, it's just the lighting of how sunny it is out here. Okay, sounds good, Ralph. And hi, Sam. You made it. I was saying, I'm like, the boys should be home soon. Watch your face. And then when you get a good amount, like really nice and hot, like that is literally white hot. Then you can switch, add some air. Whoa, that was a crazy spark. And then you just kind of aim this wherever you feel like you need to get the coals lit. Ah! Spark got me. And then, yeah, you usually wait for that little wisp of flame to come up in the center, throw a couple more pieces on top to get it lit. Obviously careful because it's hot. But I mean, like if you're gonna cook with charcoal, you gotta kind of love fire, right? Can't be scared. And then I usually leave this open for the first bit. Just give it as much air as we can. I might actually give it a little bit more fan now that we put a couple more pieces on top. And we'll come back and check in like five minutes. Stir the coals up, see how it's doing. Might add a little bit more on there. <laughs> I'm gonna need a full wash after this. Look at my arm. Just reaching into the charcoal bag. Gonna be a full wash on Kate. Clem, be careful. Are the smaller eggs better than the huge ones? It depends on what you like. Like, I love this one because it's so easy to use. It's not, it doesn't make like a massive scary fire like this one does. This is the XL that we have as well. Because yeah, once you fill that with charcoal, like it's huge. Absolutely massive fire. My mic is acting up okay. I might be just too far away. I will come back inside. Thanks for letting me know, Vian. Or let's see if just a quick battery switch does it. You know, I already did that. Yeah, come on, Papa. All right, let's go. I'm just gonna wash my hands first. Looks like a coal miner. Why do, Mike? Why do? Full wash complete. such a hot doggo. Okay, just gonna mute it really quick. Give me a sec.
Okay, I'm back. Hopefully that fixes it. But my apologies if it does not. I also did just like a little, little twist up on the cable to the battery pack. It was a touch loose, so maybe that was the ish. Your first Weber steak tasted like lighter fluid. Yeah, you jumped the gun. It is a pro tip. Good one, Troy. Okay. Let's start bringing some stuff out. Nice. The taters are actually looking so good already. I'm just going to turn the oven down a bit. Although we only have six minutes left from our 20 minutes. Okay, so we need some tongs. That's me? <laughs> what is this? Kate's hands look like this, so Sammy's beard can look like that. That's so good. <laughs> Viewn. I'm posting that on Twitter later. I'm saving that. Thank you for that. Oh, and I'll bring the salt and pepper too. Boom. Some tongs, a couple different pears. And then we'll definitely need another container just to put the cooked steaks onto. We don't put them back in the container where the raw meat was. I think the bear is home. This is why I did my stack the way I could. Because that was so easy. Okay. We put a brisket in it. <laughs> Old style. Thank you for the 18 months, friend. How are you? Okay, let's light this up. More fan. Your biggest fan. There we go. There we are. Now I'm going to do this actually. Okay, there's that big beauty. We'll kind of keep them in the middle, I think. Stir it up. Yay! And now we can add a little bit more. But those are almost like nice to cook over. You can tell by the glow, right? This thing is so dang handy. I want one more huge chunk in the center. Let's see what I can see in this bag. I do want this. Bam. Okay, now. Fire. Thanks for the 100 bit, please. Is this like a $20 tool or a $60 tool? Nice. You got the scoops for the macaroons. How much was this? That? 80? 100? Yeah. 100. This is the big green egg. It's called an egg igniter. I think it's the lighting out here. Or did that fix it? No, it was a smudge. Thanks, Samo. <laughs> yeah. It's uh 
It's better than... Whoa. Was that me? Oh, okay. It's better than using a piece of cardboard. Oh. Thank you. Welcome. Pit master. We put our grate on so we can burn that off and clean it. We got our veg out here. We brought our salt and pepper. We brought our steaks. And now I'm actually gonna close this up and let that heat start to build up. Like not a big amount of charcoal needed for this. And then like we don't really cook with the temperature gauge per se. We cook more by just looking at the coals and paying attention to how those are lit. You mostly only use the temperature dial if you're doing like lower, slower cooks and are trying to keep it at a desired temperature. Did Sammy bring home dessert? I mean, you did make dinner. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of snack is he brought. Okay. Let's uh let's go check the taters. There's one minute left on the timer anyways. Okay. I'm not really worried anyways. What? What? Holy, we're at a level one? Josie? Yay! Oh no, my camera died because it got too warm in here. Okay. Oh my god, Cookie! <laughs> we lit the camera on fire at the same time, sorry. Okay, let's try this again. Thank you so much, Cookie. 3,294 bits. We are at an even, look at that number, 980,000. <laughs> Have we seen a bigger bit goal on Twitch? I don't think so. Hi, Chrissy, how are you? Hope you had a good day today. Drink more arsenic, hello. And guys, thanks for the level three. Choo, choo, choo to all of you who are contributing. Josie, how are you? Tw 28 months in a row. The party can start now. Smoke me a kipper. I don't know if we can get those here even. Smoking the kipper. Yeah, let's troll Chad and put a million bit goal up. And then Chad's like, okay. Like I literally did never expect that. It's wild. Okay, potato peak. They're actually looking so dang good. A piece of salt blew into my eye from the fan. Oh, <laughs> Ow! Look, they're getting crisped. So we'll give those a swivel and then definitely go another 20. Very powerful fan. New scoopas for desserts. And now, Timer back on. I'm gonna give the grill like five more minutes. So while we're here, I'm actually gonna switch back to the cutting board view and we're just gonna thinly slice our green onion. Put a million as the goal. Yeah, we did. We already did. We're at 980,000 and one from Troy. <laughs> it's, it's happening now, Vune. It's actually salting my eye. When in doubt, just season yourself as well. You can never be too sure. <laughs> Bonk, we almost made it. I almost got everything done. I hope you have a good day slash night at work. 
And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Just glad you're feeling better, really. So let's trim off the roots, and then we'll definitely peel off these weird dry stringy bits from the outside. And then just nice thin slices. How is it going along, Josie? Well, we're getting closer and closer to the time where we're able to insulate it with spray foam. We have to wait until every day is above 10 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be a while still because it likes to still snow at the end of May here. And we just don't want to push it and have the insulation mess up and waste that money and have it not cure properly. So we're getting close. Yeah, snow. Woohoo. That is true, Corgon. I should really start the windowsill garden in here actually now that it is warming. Because you could take those roots that you trim if you don't trim them too short and grow, grow green onions in your windowsill. It's pretty cool. I think we'll sprinkle this over the taters. We got our Bernays sauce done. So that's all good. It was a Samo laugh. He's home. He made it home. Simple garnish. You could also do parsley or really any other herb that you enjoy fresh. Thanks, friendos. Again, we've got all of the level two emotes. This is the second hype train of the day. So we've already been spoiled once here. Two subbies, 3,396 bitlies. That's a true true for all of you for sure. Okay, let's do outside view again. Probably start grilling. See you out there. Troy, thank you for the one bitly. 980,000 and three. You know what we did this week viewing? Oh, look at that. So perfect. We watched the video of the, or a clip, sorry. A Twitch clip of the Lego hype train and the time that it just got demolished, flew right off the tracks. I'm so happy that we still built that for the short time we used it. Now it's in a happy home with like 12 other train sets. Yeah. So we're almost there. Yeah, you want what, 500? Yeah. So the stakes will probably drop the temp quite a bit. I think yeah, I can I only do one at a time. time. Yeah. I might just do one for us now and pop the other one on after I do the veggies to finish. You're doing veggies on you? It's okay. Hi, Helquin. How are you doing? What's the most bits I've been given? Oh, heck, Chris, I don't know. Probably the donators know better than me. It it, yeah, it doesn't really matter though. Thankful for everything. Yeah. So if we look at the Yay! temp here, creeping up past 425 already. So it really didn't take long to get heated up. And thank you, Troy, for the 500. My dude, I'm going to close down the bottom just a little bit. Start evening out that heat. You have two chairs to lay on. Dog has two chairs and she's laying in the dirty grass. <laughs> that, she's like, yeah, this is good. It's good there. Guys, it's good.
Making up for your lame one bitty chairs. I love them though. This dog. <laughs> She's just looking at us. <laughs> She's smirking. Bit badge tier notification. Nice one. You leveled up. Okay, we're almost at 500. Let's grab the meat. The meat skis. Just gonna put this stuff underneath. Chrissy Dubs. Thanks, Chrissy Dubs. That's my bro that I get to work with. We fed a lot of kiddos ourselves this week. So that's amazing. Uncover this. Check that out. Garlic, thyme, olive oil, oh. red wine, vin, and just a bit of some salt and cracked pepper. So we're gonna do a season on this one side, a bit more before it goes on. Yeah, she's getting her vitamin D. I will need something, yep. Samo's on it. I mean, like, you want a pretty good layer of salt. There's a lot of meat there. It can be deceiving. Why not do a little bit more pepper? Why not, eh? And then this is going on. We also, I'll show you in a sec here, but I know we're good to cook on the grill as well because there's no, like, smoke coming out of the top here. If this was still like smoking, do not cook over that. Make your food taste like trash. Nice, clear stuff. And well, it's at 500, so let's go. Burp it so you don't flame your face off. That looks great, I would say. Yeah, so if you're gonna keep the lid open, shut the bottom down now. That That's way, right. It starts to just use the yeah. So Sam said we just shut down the bottom vent because we're gonna keep the lid open and we only wanna use the energy from the coals in here now. We don't want extra uh, oxygen coming from below. And you slap it on. <laughs> his face oh, was like, man. that's my wife. That's his wife. This is the content that we provide here. It's go time. I see what you did there, Clem. And we'll go mostly open flame as much as we can. And then if we find it's a little bit under near the end, we can always just do a close of the lid to keep some steam inside and finish it off. Frick, this looks so good. And yeah, this smell is amazing. So I'm gonna say maybe five minutes per side. It's really not gonna take too long. I'm just gonna close up this other one since we'll cook it later. Bring this stuff over next. So earlier on stream, if you missed it, we prepped our veg, broccoli and carrot to be able to grill. And all we've done so far is toss it with sweet chili sauce and a little bit of olive oil. So while this steak is cooking, also just gonna check. It's not flaring up or anything, so that's really good. Yeah, it looks so good. While this is going, I'm just gonna season up the veg on this side. A 
Just sprinkle some salt and pepper and mix it up. Oh, I didn't mean to kick that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Holy. <laughs> it really made the camera shake, I'm sorry. Take it easy, Kate. Okay, those are my meat turning tongs. Get these other tongs. Turn our brock. But first, we're just gonna do a little lift. Look at that. The grill marks are already there and we're going to offset it now. Boom. To make those diamond marks. and let that go a couple more moments. Thanks, Chris. And then can you guys see the meat grains in the flank steak, how they run? So they're all running this way. And which means that we're gonna actually slice opposite of that, right? So that it's not really tough when we go to eat it. That's a really important thing. That's really the only part that's challenging about making this type of steak is cutting it correctly. Yeah, we, so we got it up to 500 and then we just closed the bottom vent down and it should kind of stay at 500 now with the lid open and the, the way that the coals are. Seems to be cooking pretty evenly as well. I'm not seeing any like hot spots. And yeah, good one, Clem, posting up the recipe. It's also good just cooked in a pan too. You could also just do it in a pan if you don't have a grill. <laughs> Unlurk. Blood Oak has found snacks. And now, back to chat some more. Welcome back, Blood Oak. Yeah, you never understood how or why. Mostly the how for cutting steaks still mystifies you. So that's why I was saying, like, can you see the way that the strands of meat are running? So you always cut opposite of that. We're going to go for a flip. Not getting, like, super dark, but I'm okay with that. I know we're gonna have really nice flavor from just cooking over charcoal compared to gas. And the garlic's not burning either, right? Sometimes when you cook at a really high heat and there's garlic in the marinade, it'll just burn and taste bitter. This looks nummy to me. Five more minutes and then this should be coming off to rest. And then we'll pop those veggies on. And then those will probably take like seven to 10 while this rest. I'm gonna go peek on the potatoes right now. We have like five minutes left on them. Just would hate for them to get too dark and no one's in there. Mmm, it smells really good in here. Hey, HPX, how are you? And Speed, just as I'm going, 
He says, ka-chow, with the 27 months. They're actually not too dark. They look perfect. I'm happy. We'll just let those keep going. 27 months with speed. The amount of over 20 months resubs we got today. I'm dead. We're building one big happy food family. That is cooking so nice. Yeah, this is a flank steak. Eek, eek, eek. What is that? And good to hear that you're doing well, HPX. We'll just do some ASMR for a bit. with the crazy motorbikers that probably shouldn't be riding their motorbike right now, but hey, to each their own. The niece got your phone? Amazing. And then, so this is one thing I always look for when I'm cooking, especially beef. So now we are running it this way. Let's go like opposite. I know that it's creeping up to medium rare. When we start to see a little bit of the juices come out the top here. Like I literally just saw that little bit pop out. And so once you see those juices running, it's like, okay, we're almost done. We're getting close. And then at the same time, we can also like give it a little poke. So it tapers down as well. So it's thinner on this side. So you'll always have it a bit more well done for those folks and a bit more rare up here. Yeah, isn't it just unreal out here? making me excited for summer because I know we're not there yet. I think this uh, cut of beef also grills really nicely because it's lean. It doesn't have a ton of fat that's gonna flare up. HPX, out of curiosity, you guys do most of your shopping at Costco and local groceries. Wondering where you go for wholesale salmon for like sashimi in Canada. Ugh. I honestly don't know. I would assume like most wholesale salmon you can buy HPX is probably not sushi grade. Like it's probably the gross farm stuff. So unless you're close to the ocean, would honestly like not really recommend Maybe the other option, I don't know if this is possible, is like getting some frozen fillets and doing it that way. Or maybe fins. I think HPX is in Toronto. Okay. Let's say this is very, very close to being there. Like one more minute, that is it. And then I am 
So this was a little fatty side here underneath. See how it's kind of sizzling up? I'm just gonna take it out of that spot. But even that flare, like that's not too dark. tried the Costco frozen fillets and it worked out well reading it was safe but the color is definitely paler and yeah Toronto okay well sometimes people move right so I was like I think they're still there yeah very very close here nice color hey and like obviously cooking over a charcoal fire is not gonna be as even as cooking over a gas or propane flame, but the flavor is way better. Thanks so much, HPX. Glad you're able to pop in and see this today. Okay, it's coming off. Veggies are going right on. Wow. So the juices were just just starting to run. Boom. Veggies. Should we give it a little clean? A little scrubba? Well, that was easy. You're nomming on the steak. <laughs> Whoa, that's why we didn't cut the broccoli too small. Get some carrots on here. Whoa. And the veggies I usually actually load on up, really pile it. It cooks good like that, kind of steams together. It doesn't get too charred. Mmm, the sweet chili smells really good. Can we sneak one more maybe? Okay, I'm gonna bring the steak in just to tent it with a touch of foil. So I'll be right back just so it doesn't get too cold. Leave those tongs there. Chat, make sure that the veg doesn't burn. The dog <laughs> just running behind. And I'll turn the potatoes off too. That's good. Those look really good actually. I don't think we need the garlic butter on the steak. It already looks really yummy. I know, isn't that just like the worst sound? It's my only thing that I don't love about it. Okay, coming back out. Ah, uh, actually, I will need a little container for the veggies when they come off, since I didn't fit them all on. Sam's right, I should have just started the XL today. It would have gone quicker. Amateur hour. Can you tell I haven't cooked with fire in a bit? Mmm. Okay, I already smell the broccoli charring, so that's good. Nice thing about grilling veggies, it doesn't take long. And I kick the camera again. 
so bad. Kate, watch your feet, skis. Flip them. Do you guys want a close view on these too? are getting like awesome grill marks. What? I'm glad we marinated the veg for a bit before grilling because I think it really helps them cook more evenly and like taste better too. How's it going out here? Good. The steak is resting. Okay. We're just finishing our veggies. Are the spices on the veg? We did sweet chili sauce. I'm just gonna move this back a touch. Sweet chili sauce, olive oil, salt and pepper. Pretty simple. The broccoli is almost done. Yeah, we still got it. That's the first thing I said. I was like, okay, now let's go see if we can still cook with fire. <laughs> Look at this nice bed here. Look at this nice chair. Can you turn around so you see? Come on. Come on. Yeah, once the florets are... Uh, oh no, almost lost it. Yeah, nice and charred. Just pop those off. Load them back on. Bam. Keep the lid on there. Yeah. Yeah, we can probably do the flank with the rest of the carrots. Like, this is enough for us three. He's like, I'm out of here. One more spot. How this? It's actually getting pretty bendy already. That's awesome. And they're not getting too dark. Potatoes are good, sauce is good. We're ready. Yeah, Chris. Can't wait to grill your flank. I packed one for you. There was five in that bag. What? So five flank steaks for a hundred bucks. That's good. I was like, what? <laughs> and the, so there were one kilo each. So it was five kilo bag. And it's 20 bucks a kilo, 100 bucks. <laughs> Gotta love those numbers. You shall pay tonight. You pay whenever you're ready, dude. Oh, I love this view. You even get the iPad on the side. Bay egg, Lil Nose. Hey, you see the smoke coming out? That means we're like charring up in there. You don't have the bottom vent open, it's dropping temp. Or you're just getting some steam in. Just getting some steam in for your carrots. Let's take this. Do the flop test. They're getting there. They're all even 
Fine. Yeah. Pretty even, I would say. I think we'll redress the carrots with just a bit more oil after they come off. Just looking a bit dry there, but really flavorful. I thought that was a good deal, hey Clem? take these ones off. Oops. Those ones can go up in the center more. Do you want me to put the other ones on or just finish that? Yeah, you might as well put the carrots on. I'll just do the steak afterwards. Okay. Just keep going, chat. Absolutely no flare-ups. Gotta love that. We did. Mm. I'm just gonna pour all those juices over this. Pour that over the carrots. Done with that. You can smell it already, yeah. Yeah, Dusty you said you've had grilled carrots before, so if you know the smell, you know. I'm glad we didn't do Greek slam today, switched it to Sunday. So it's yeah, just because, too perfect to cook outside. Because Sunday you're going to be snowing. <laughs> yeah. Like to be uh. I think it's plus 19 right now. Yeah. Actually, my watch says, oh, 23. Nope. How come it's not focusing? We can't even press it. Did they change the app? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, Sunday snowing today is 23 Celsius plus. Okay, these first carrots I'm sure can come off now. Whoa. Charred bitlies. Let's toss the broccolis. Yeah. Edmonton weather doesn't even know. So yeah, now that we opened up the bottom, it's getting a bit too hot. That's why we just cook without the vent open. Almost there. So nice, Clem. Like really insane how nice it is. Okay, I'm gonna finish flipping these and then I'm gonna go inside and get ready to plate up. I'll get Sam to finish this and bring it in when it's done. Like five minutes, guys. Yeah. Yep. Him and Astra. What do you think? She's like, we slicing? Come on. Okay, 
Okay, the smashed potatoes are kind of soft. They're not crispy, 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 but that's okay. They're still gonna taste insane with the duck fat on it. Plates. Suss out the sauce. I'm gonna switch back to in here now, guys. Since you saw most of the veg grilling, so our sauce was hanging out over the double boiler, over top of the oven, so it stayed warm. Look at how awesome that worked. Yayer. Really nice and thick. is what we talked about. We're like, we like the thick baronets. That was the second round of veggies, Troy. Got a little bit dark in here. So there's our baronets, basically hollandaise with tarragon and shallot. And then this, and I'm Rielia or Imrielia. Welcome in, thank you for the follow. Ready? Oh, look at the juices from Reston. The dog's tail just started wagging. Let's get a big knife for slicing. Very moist. Moist for moisty and a cutting board. Whoa. That feels insane. That's gonna get poured on everyone's plates afterwards, I would say. Hello. Clem, <laughs> I'll take the potatoes, veggies, and steak, please. So actually, I'm gonna switch it to this way, just cause I'm left-handed and that's how I'm gonna slice it. Ready? So kind of angle your knife at the same time. So see the angle that I'm going? And then we're cutting this way because you can see the grain in the meat. The lines are all running this way. You always cut against the grain. That's super important. Like that's where you can entirely mess up an entire dish just by cutting the meat wrong. Boom. And like nice thin slices. That looks in like just perfect. That's how I would like to eat my flank. Whoa. Hello. Hello there. I can still cook. See if I can slice this a bit better. It is actually like a bit rare in there, but I honestly like just personal preference. I like a more rare flank than like medium. And there's just like, a vein in there as well. You can see that's why it looks really bloody. Let's keep going. I mean, the good thing about undercooking stuff, if you, this does happen, is you can always put it back on the heat. We can go somewhere from here. If we overcook something, we literally can't fix that, right? But let's try, like if you're sus about it, like to me, that looks good. See the couple connective bits in there? Mmm. Hello, EHPZ. 
And yeah, we're doing good. Hope the same for you. I'm good with that. I just wanted to try like the whole piece and decide on my own whether it's too chewy, which it's not. I find it gets way chewier if you creep up to like medium. Mmm, the garlic herb flavor. I'll probably stop like here. Slice a bit from this end because it gets more cooked on the ends and then just like throw this middle chunk on where it's the thickest. So this is also another thing we can talk about. Like if you cook it perfectly to medium rare in this part, in the thickest part, well, your outside bits are gonna be overcooked and tough and dry. So maybe this is like the best way to cook a flank. And so now just turn it back around. Mm, I told you that was the fatty side. Might even be a bit of connective tissue though. Look at that. Just glistening. Okay. Cause yeah, that's a bit under just for me. Like I do like rare stuff, but there is a level where it becomes too chewy. Just pop that up. Yeah, I will eat all of it. Some people though will just slice it rare like that and they'll be like, yeah. That looks really perfect though. Yeah, I wish this color was 160F because we like food hot and totally like 130F mid rare. It's not that hot inside, right? It just doesn't happen. Look at those. I'm gonna try one of these. Hmm, that's really good. I love the crunch and the char. I'm just gonna sprinkle a bit of olive oil over. Just to get them like glistening again. And then we're gonna plate up. We didn't bring any tongs in, but that's okay. We have more. That is true as well. Yeah, like you could always save that chunk that's more rare for the next day to use up. Good one. Yeah, that totally fixed those. Okay. Bam. Taters are in here a pretty hot tray still. We got the meats. We got potatoes. Duck, fat, smashed, potatoes. We'll make the boys plates first. Yeah, <laughs> teacher patted you on the head. Look at that. I think those turned out all right. I need to try a little piece still. Sneak a bit off the side of one here. Pop that in my mouth. Mmm. I don't think they need any more salt. I think we're good. Veggies next. Couple carrots. 
couple broccos. It's looking like about maybe five carrots per person. Got to leave room for the steak on there. Okay. Feel sorry for the vegans today, Niche. It's a pretty balanced plate. Like, take the steak away, potatoes, grilled veggies, and the sauce. I'd be okay with that. Okay, so now kind of like fan this out. I'm gonna do only a small amount right now for us. Just so I can have enough for a photo. Are you gonna take this back out then? Yeah, yeah you can take it off. Pop that on there for you. That was yours that I started doing. What one? This. Yeah, you just take it off if you want. Stir up, probably one of the best parts of this plate, underrated sauce. Pop that right in the middle, because we're sick like that. <laughs> and then just a really, really simple garnish for the potatoes, just because I like the way that tastes. Green onion. Meat and potatoes for the rando. Yeesh. I'm happy with that. Thank you. Now we'll do ours. A little bit more room to play with on this plate. This is the photo plate as well. You will lick this bowl clean. I have no doubt that that is what will happen, actually. I may or may not have walked in on my bro doing that. <laughs> For some meals that I've made, I was like, or I asked this, I'm like, oh, Astra got the pre-rinse cycle. He's like, nah, that was me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Too good. Boys will be boys. This is the truth. Mm. Our carrots. Nice little pile of broccoli beside. Just for health reasons, really, right? Nah, I actually really like veggies. I really, really enjoy eating vegetables. I just also can't give up meat though. Can't do it, guys. Holy, the way that that is leaning here, I'm kind of terrified. I'm just gonna pick this up. Where's my juices? I'll just pour it in the veggies. Just don't want that to go over. I'm like on the floor. Okay. Boom, boom. I think also the coals were just a touch uneven, just judging by how this was cooked. Or I might have also rushed it on the second side. Just trying to think what, what happened. Either way though, we got food and it's going to be tasty. Mm. 
Potatoes need butter pats or sour cream bacon bits and cheese, please. Well, this is why we have our dirty sauce. Our Bernays sauce to bring everything together like that. So same as the other dish. I'm just going to pop it right in the center, which like to me, if I was served the sauce like this, it's like, okay, I just like should eat this with everything. Thank you, caffeinated. And then our last little very simple garnish. Just some green onions, because why not? It's good with potatoes. Okay, I don't have a phone right now to take a photo, so I'll be right back. I don't think Sam brought mine in. Just need phono for photo. The dog sprint in front of me. Yeah, it's true. You rarely are here for that. Well, I'm so happy that you saw like most of the stream today. That's so awesome. Chow down. The juice is running on the board. Okay, I think I'll take the photo like this. Or maybe more like that. Whoa. That was it. That's the one. Okay, whatever angle this is, is actually better. I got my finger in the other view by accident. Okay, let's eat. Let's chow. Let's try it out. Mm, this is my steak knife, I suppose. If I even need it. Blondie! Dude, if you were here today, I would have made you one of these plates. For sure. Okay. First things first. I'm going to take this from over here because it's a little bit less rare. Just for my liking. Well, that cut really easily, so that's nice. Mm. Marinated grilled flank steak. So much fun to grill up in the summer when it's warm. Dipped in a thick bearnaise. Mm. What? The tarragon is perfect. I will like, want more sauce with the steak. Mmm. Thank you, friend, for the 297. Mmm. I'm sorry, Cookie. Yep. Yeah. The wife is no meats on Friday because of Lent right now. AKA, I'm being bad. For sure. Okay, now we're going for a dip. Duck fat smashed potatoes. It actually is perfect. Like, that side that we sliced up to the rare point dust is really, really nice. You would be able to tell if it was too chewy. I wouldn't be able to swallow it and like chew it that fast. Mmm. Mm hmm. Whoa, just a bit of nuttiness from the duck fat. That's wild. And the green onion is actually really nice on there. Just like a bit of freshness. Right. Yeah, it's like $20 for that one steak, which is definitely going to feed three of us for sure. So divide that in three. Like, that's not much. Whoa. The veg, the way it marinated first, it's very flavorful. 
sweet chili grilled veg. Look at that nice char on the carrot. Like perfectly tender. Let's do this. <laughs> I think we're gonna kill Randall with this one. I don't know what's better, the broccoli or the carrot. Really good together though. Have like two different veg on the same plate. Cook the same, but they both taste different still. Yeah, like this plate. Okay, let's play this game because this is sometimes fun. If you were to get like this plate at a restaurant, the way that I plated the same portion, easily, I would say probably $36 right now at any restaurant and he's doing good dust yeah he's just like building his engine i don't know if he's gonna stream again i got nothing i just gotta do me you know you would ask for feta miche i would not want to know what the chef would do to you i was gonna say maybe even closer to like 40 42 dollars i would say i probably put at least five and a half ounces of meat on the plate, maybe even six. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Samo's coming in. Mmm. <sighs> I'm a meat and potato monster, chat. Bite cheese? Okay. He's broken. It's okay though. I know I'm good. Yeah, this looks a bit unedible. <laughs> Better take care of that. Mmm. Okay, one more dip. <laughs> yeah, and this steak, just for Sam. <laughs> Hi, Bob, how are you doing? It's really nice to not just like have a plate, just mush, right? Like soft veg, soft steak, soft potatoes, and like a sauce. I definitely like having some crunchy things and like crispy bits as well, right? Just to balance everything out. Did I? I'm sorry. I might have missed it in chat or I got too excited. So what does this mean, Bob? I was gonna say we made a food baby today. What should we call it? We just name the baby meat. Thank you so much, Bob. I can't believe we're nine months now. Meat Junior, if you will. <laughs> Okay. Those couple bites, I'm so happy. Flank Jr. instead of Frank, it's Flank. Hello, meet my son Flank. <laughs> we need to finish cooking it. The other bit, we will. We will, the grill's still on. We'll take care of it in a sec here. Guys, we're finishing up today. We got a fun stream planned for tomorrow. We're gonna be doing some more barbecue and outside, smoked pork ribs, going on to the Traeger instead. And I'll be starting at 10 a.m. Pacific instead of noon Pacific, so two hours. 
earlier than usual just to let the ribs cook for enough time. Who are we going to raid today? It's a BB Bubs? Oh. He's not even on. He's not on? Nope. Do we want to see Insanity from Cosmic Cat? Mac and cheese stuffed crust pizza? That sounds pretty wild. Or there is a kitchen stream. There's a new kitchen stream and they look bumping. Let's go visit them. Zombie 111. That's where we're going. Thank you, EB Cash. I hope everyone else has a great rest of their day. Hopefully you learned something or we at least inspired you to cook and spread the deliciousness. What did I say? Zombie 111. All of the recipes we cook today are in Discord, so pop in there if you want to cook them in the future. And yeah, I'm so excited for barbecue tomorrow. Ribs, cornbread, apple coleslaw, apple barbecue sauce, coconut macaroons dipped in Lindor chocolate. That's it. We have missed this kitchen as well, Bob. We missed it too. I was so happy to be back cooking today. Yeah, adios, friends. Love y'all. Stay safe. You know where to find us if you need anything at all, like any socials work. Other than that, we're going to go relax, chill out, and get ready for tomorrow. Because it's going to be a fun one. Lots and lots of orders. Like, how many racks of ribs are we cooking? 14. 14 racks of ribs. We could literally only fit two more on the Traeger, and that would be it. Oh, that, that, that's it. Sorry, we can literally fit no more on the Traeger, and that is it. <laughs> 14 for Mish. Okay, love y'all. Stay safe. Hope to see you tomorrow. 10 a.m. Pacific is when we start. Let's go be see how this kitchen is. Or be square. Yeah. Okay, Sammy, say bye. Bye. Bye.